Here's a protein hack. Take a protein shake. All right, look, everybody's told you that before, but there's more. Don't just take a protein shake after your workout or when you wake up. Those are good times as well, but try this. I've had this work with some clients. Make a small protein shake, 10 to 15 grams, and just wash down your meals with it. In other words, with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, have a small 10 to 15 gram protein shake, and it's a lot easier for some people to be consistent with protein when they do it that way. Give it a shot. That's an interesting tip. Yeah. Mm, I don't have think you guys that, ever had anybody no, try this? No, oh, yeah. I actually have never. Nobody did the milk thing that I yeah. mentioned before. If people can Which handle is the same that, thing. but yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. You know where I got this? You know what? where I got this? Mm. Where I got it from? Mm. I had a client who we, we were trying to hit protein targets and also simultaneously, they were one of those weird clients. I know you guys have had this where you tell them to drink water and they're like, I don't like to taste the water. Water's boring. <laughs> yeah. So she was used to always drinking something with flavor. Uh -huh. And so anyway, through the process of getting her to eat more protein, she started using shakes because it was just, it was so hard for her to get through food. It was just a pain in the butt. So I had, I introduced her to a shake. She's like, oh my God, it tastes so good. I look forward to it. And I'm like, hmm. Because she would always have some kind of calorie containing or sugar-free garbage drink with her meals. So I said, what if instead of making your 40 gram shake, you make like a 10 or 15 gram shake. So it's a little thinner. You, you use it to wash down your meals. Yeah, like, yeah. Let me try that. And she loved it. And she was super consistent. Always remember to take a protein. Hmm. Ended up hitting her protein targets and it was, it worked out, you know, really it's well. Yeah. I don't know why. miss for some people. Yeah. There. I don't know why I never thought to do that. Like I could totally see you taking like, uh, especially like a good whey shake, like legions and <clears throat> cutting, oh, yeah. cutting the serving in half. Mm -hmm. You're still getting what an extra close to 20 grams of protein, right? Probably eight, 15 to 18, somewhere yeah. in that range. And thinner, it's going to be super, it's already kind of a thin, it's not a super thick shake as it is. That's really going to thin it out. Yeah. So it almost is water. And it tastes good. Flavored water going down. Adding it to a meal where you have maybe 30 grams of protein. Exactly. Now boost it to a 45, 50 gram exactly. meal. Yeah. And you do that once in the early in the day, once in the evening. That's, I've never thought to That's do that. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah, that would definitely taste better. Remember when Gatorade would try to make it with like protein and they added it to Ooh. like, yeah. And there was another like soda brand that tried to add pro and it would just end up being chalky. Gross. Nastiness. Yeah, right? gross. No, no. If you do like, like some proteins taste better than others. Whey is always, it's always going to be one of the best, best tasting proteins. Uh, the bone broth one that we, uh, that was a good one. So collagen does well, but whey, if you can, if you can, in, you know, intake dairy and be okay with it, whey is such a high quality protein. Now, one of the, here's another side to this that I didn't even think about. One of the, um, you know, criticisms of whey is that it's so fast digesting. Well, now when you have 15 grams of it with a solid protein meal, yeah. You've slowed down the absorption of it and it's yeah. going to add to the satiety of your meal as well. But really the benefit isn't, I mean, cause you mm. could theoretically obviously take like most people do just take a full shake post-workout or whatever, in addition to the meals. And a lot of people do it that way. But I found this valuable because some people still forget yeah. to take their damn shake. That's I, it. It's, and then it's like, Oh, well you're gonna eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner anyway. Protein is always the one. Put it in your water yeah. and now you have your meal with it. And <clears throat> like I said, after I did it with that one client, I had other clients who were always like, oh, I forgot to take my shake. I always forget to take it. I always whatever. And I did this with them and they were consistent. At least two out of three meals they would have protein with, which worked out. Well, well, I could see it too helping with somebody who just has a hard time uh, consuming that many whole food calories, right? So yeah. they're just- Oh, always, yeah, of course. Yeah, like a female client who's smaller in stature and eating, you know, eight ounces of steak or meat is, is tough. You know, like her whole life, she's ate That's four right. ounces or less. Now all of a sudden I'm doubling that. And it's like, oh my God, Adam, it's like stuffing that down. So- letting her have a smaller amount of meat and then having that. Ideally, we're always going to be whole foods, right? So I'm always going to tell a client- you can't beat whole food. Ideally, to go this route with with your meat and food. But if it's if there's always going to be that client who struggles with you know, eating that many calories or hitting that protein intake. And so this is, this is where that stuff always makes sense. The funny part about the narrative, though, around uh, protein shakes is that they did such a good job of marketing that people can think of it as like a- a health supplement or a supplement you 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 need to take if you're working out like it has some sort of like yeah they did oh, a really good job yeah. like yeah when I would when I would get clients now, you know it's like part what, of the uniform to the yeah. defense of that most people probably would though right because they under eat protein well hence why it's lasted right? That's right I mean just like you're you talk about things that have been around forever and uh, you, there's something to investigate there like why did it get passed down for generations well part of the reason why it gets passed down for generations because it's like good advice who was just telling us we were laughing off air. 
or somebody who had some like gimmicky 30 minute, 30 protein, 30. Oh, who, who was that? Andrew, you said that yesterday. Who was that? Oh, oh yeah. When we were yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. that guy. Right. And he, this was off air, right? It was off air when we were all talking about no, it. It's I think it was. All oh, you brought. Oh, yeah, you yeah, said it on there. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly an example that it's like it, we were laughing you about it. it. Right. Yeah, but it's, it, I guarantee that if people took that advice, like yeah. of course it's going to. Well, and that's the same thing with people. Same thing with what I'm saying. It's like all I'm doing is I'm taking the same advice, which is okay. Get it from Whole Foods first. If you can't, for whatever reason, then a protein shake is valuable because, uh, and the data is extremely clear on this. Okay, hitting proper protein targets. And when I say proper protein targets, I mean those that are related to muscle building, satiety, and fat loss, not the minimum or whatever the RDA gives. And that number is roughly, probably a little less, but roughly a pound of, pro, excuse me, a gram of protein per pound of body weight in normal weight individuals. So a shake can be very valuable because if you're missing that constantly, once you add that, well, you build muscle faster that in turn leads to a faster or more healthy metabolism, which then in turn leads to better fat loss. Well, you know, you could you could take the shake anytime you want. It really doesn't make a difference. All I'm doing is I'm packaging it in a way to where for some people, it makes a lot of sense. Some people are, are, are going to hear this and go, oh my God, why don't I just do that? That's so easy. And they'll end up doing it and it'll work great for them, yeah. you know? And that's just it. Speaking of Legion's way, what was, they have a crazy amount of flavors. They don't just have chocolate. Oh, they, have, they like, have fruity oh, pebbles. Yeah. They have they the ch caramel salted caramel. Have you guys tried the different flavors? Yeah, I've tried almost yeah, all of them. Yeah. Have you really? Uh -huh. Well, uh -huh. yeah, because actually my kids are now sort of at that phase where they, they like to have a protein shake every now and then too, especially if they're training and, you know, sort of like a little bit of a treat for them. And so I in the back, there was there's quite a few different flavors, and I was like, might as well just try a few. And, they, dude, they love um, – the salted caramel one, and then the um, it's like a, I think it's a mint chocolate or it's a oh, chocolate, really? yeah. And then the obviously for me it was the peanut butter chocolate, but I gotta, I gotta work my way back there. I mean, I think <laughs> they have over ten flavors. Maybe Doug could pull up and look. Like no, they have a, a ton of yeah. flavors. Yeah, Dutch chocolate, apple pie, banana That's bread, chocolate. birthday cake, chocolate peanut butter, cocoa cereal, cookies and cream, Dutch. I already said that one. French vanilla, fruity cereal, honey cereal, mint chocolate, mocha cappuccino, pumpkin pie, salted caramel. Oh my god! <laughs> strawberry banana, unflavored, and cinnamon cereal. That's how bro. They have a ton. <laughs> unflavored. I've, yeah. only, <laughs> I've only tried, I guess, a quarter of that. No, oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of them. Wow. No, right. he's no, he's got a bunch. Yeah, yeah, all right. I'm always Enjoy. been like, a, I mean, I'm. It's. I actually haven't had a whey shake since I was off dairy, but I'm back to allowing myself to have dairy back Go in the diet. It. So I absolutely will have. Because I remember even when Cabral was talking. To me, he says that he said that he said way wasn't the big one, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. His yeah. was never a, a real issue for me either. The, the yeah. Legion version, yeah, like I don't know if it's the digestive enzymes or anything that's yeah. in there, but that helps, yeah, it could be. You know, yeah. the other thing too that you guys might want to pay attention to is so artificial sweeteners it can sometimes uh affect people's wow. gut, mm -hmm. okay, and there, there may be effect on the microbiome, okay. So if you're dealing with like SIBO, so I don't, so in a healthy gut. I don't know if it necessarily is an issue. Now, some people would say yes, and there's some studies that suggest it might be. There's other studies that say no, it's not an issue. But we've never studied what artificial sweeteners do in a SIBO mm -hmm. gut, okay? I know for me, when I have, when my SIBO is bad, right? When I, when I got the symptoms of SIBO, especially back before I really figured it out, I couldn't have any artificial sweeteners at all. Sucralose, aspartame, didn't matter. I would instantly mess up my gut. Once my gut is healthy, now it doesn't seem to have an effect. So if you're dealing with that, then you what's, might want to look what's, at I'm in the thick of it. So. What's the percentage of people that have SIBO? I don't know. You know, there's not numbers. No. There's not data out on that no. to support. I'm sure, like, most of them don't even know they have it. Well, I, I feel like that we continue to see that, right? Like yeah. you'll have we'll have clients will be troubleshooting stuff, and then it'll be like, man, it seems like you might yeah. have SIBO. There's also SIFO. So there's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, yeah. small intestinal fungal overgrowth. Right. Um. There could Candida. just be gut inflammation too yeah. that's not, you know, related that way. Um, but I don't know. That's a good question. I, you know, gut issues are so, they seem common, right? They seem super common. Yeah. I don't know. Today's program giveaway is the super bundle. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, Cyber Monday right now, 60% off everything, everything. Every MAPS program, 60% off. Every MAPS bundle, 60% off. By the way, you can get everything 60% off. In other words, there's no limit to how many programs you can get. Get one for yourself. 
Get one for your mom. You know she'll love it. Get one from your dad. Get one for your boyfriend, girlfriend. I don't care. Use this time to take advantage because this only happens once a year. If you're interested, here's what you got to do. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. I don't know. It seems like over the years, it's just like based off of environment or food changing, you know, whatever it is, like it's all coming to fruition. You know, I think these last few years is like, it's accelerating. Well, you know, it's interesting. So, you know, the appendix, right? They, we used to think that the appendix was like this useless leftover, you know, oh, appendage man. from you know evolution and we don't need it. Just take it out. Yeah. Just take it out. No big deal. Now we know that the appendix acts like a reservoir for our microbiome. Okay. Which means that it probably, we probably have it because humans probably went through events in most of human history where they ate something and it washed them the fuck out because they got sick or whatever, because stuff wasn't very clean. Dude. And so I'm wondering if an occasional like pruning of the microbiome with uh, herbal antimicrobials might be what everybody needs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think it's comical that we ever went through a period of time where there, we thought that something inside of us like didn't need it. Bro, that happens like, all they the still, time. Like even like, yeah, your tonsils. Your wisdom teeth, bro. Your they wisdom still, teeth, they, your tonsils. Yeah, your, dude. Like, dude, they're just oh yeah, just get rid of it. Yeah, they're not necessary because <laughs> sci science has shown that we don't need it. Yeah. It's yeah, like, oh, okay, yeah, let's just pull it out. That's a good, good idea. Yeah. All right, whatever, dude. You're so much smarter <laughs> yeah, than evolution. Yeah, like, I know. <laughs> you know, the whole wisdom teeth thing is because, and they've shown this, as you go to a more grain-heavy diet, your jaw shrinks mm -hmm. and your, your teeth get crowded. Yeah. And so that's why your wisdom teeth don't fit. Yeah, it's because we are we eat, like, easily chewable food. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, our... our we just don't have that expansion we're supposed to have out of our By the way, this jaw. makes sense. It makes sense that your teeth and your jaw would adapt to your diet as yeah. you're growing as a child. More because roughage and, you have and sets meat. of teeth that fall out, come back in. So, you know, that's why I say now, like, it's important to have little babies, or, you know, before they can, like, give them a piece of meat on the bone that they can't really rip off, but have them, like, work it and chew on it. Yeah. Um, and don't always mash up their food and all that stuff. Do you Do you think with, like... AI Braces technology and companies like Seed that are on the front end of like things like probiotics and stuff like that. Do you think we're going to get to a place where like a company like that can use AI technology to go in and like figure out and assess somebody's yes. gut and then figure out what's not populated yes. what, and be like precisely go in and be like, yes. here, because of your diet and the way we've evolved and the way you eat, you're missing boom, 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 these things like that based off of the AI feedback. I do. And then then them customly make like a probiotic or something. I do. So right now what we That's have, crazy. right now the best science we have is we yeah. know that there are certain strains that seem to be generally uh, beneficial. The lactobacillus strains, the bifido strains and, and some others. So like seed, for example, you mentioned seed. Right. So they have the strains in there that we know that they're generally beneficial, but it's not individualized, right? Everybody gets the same capsule. And that's as good as it gets. Like seed is, yeah. well, and now they're head and shoulders. delivery system on top of that. Yeah, they're head and shoulders above every other company, okay? Yeah. But there's so much that we don't know, and it's going to take AI to figure that out. Think of the billions of, you know, bacteria in your gut, the interplay between them, mm -hmm. the interplay between them and your body, the changing uh, environment that your body goes through when you in particular as an individual are stressed or feel a particular way or eat a particular food, there's so many variables. It's going to take AI to figure that out, but I think they will. I think yeah. they'll be able to figure it out. I mean, it's been on my mind quite a bit. Like we, I've told you guys, we're, we're re-signing all of our partners for next year, right? So had, Katrina and I have an opportunity to talk to uh, a lot of the founders and what's going on. And it's always a great time to catch up and oh, the future of next year. They were one of the companies I actually requested if we could get them back on the show, because it's been a few years since we've talked to them. And I really want to hear like where, like what's new. Yeah. yeah what's new totally. because they're on the front end it's of all that frontier, new frontier. Yeah, and they are science. head and shoulders above everybody else with the science and everything like that. I really am curious of like, we haven't really talked to them since the explosion of AI in the last couple oh, of years. Oh yeah. Have they AI, integrated that? Right. Like, yeah. yeah. And I bet they have, and I, I can't wait to like talk to them and hear what they see coming down the pipe and what I, I bet they're, they're going to be able to make something probably that you swallow. That'll go through the gut and pick things up. Um, and by the way, they can make things so small. Did you know? I think I put this in the notes. Yes, I did. They made a camera. This is the, tr I've never, I, I cannot believe that, that this actually exists, but of course it does. They made a camera that's so small. It's literally the size, I think, of a grain. A, oh, no, sorry. It's the size of a grain of salt. What? 
It's the size how of a it? grain of salt. I just, is it, how, how is it even possible to And it make takes some of images that? that look like a full size camera. How little do the people have to be that make that? <laughs> <laughs> so little. Really I was like, nimble. I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little Keebler <laughs> elves like making these things. It right? doesn't even make sense. Yeah, like, but like, how do you capture those images? That's the part that trips me out. It's, like, how does how does it store the the it, like? The information, those like how do you, how do you like take that data? Transfer? It's got to be use, some sort of a no, no, no. receiver or satellite that sends it, right? I mean, no, it's not, what? It, no, it can't, it's it can't taking house. the picture itself. What? Listen, he, okay, I don't know where it's my mind, Where's my mind that picture go. I can't wrap my brain around. <laughs> I still this. don't understand how regular cameras work. For <laughs> yeah, 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 much less a, a rice. <laughs> how the hell rice did I create a rice did you size one? Steal my soul and put it in that box. <laughs> yeah. No, listen. This is what it says here. The secret lies in over a million eyes. So on this grain of salt size camera are a million eyes, roughly the size of an HIV virus, covering the camera, known as its meta surface. I like how they matched it to an HIV Why virus. Why HIV virus? Yeah. They're yeah, just well, to show you how big yeah, it is as a virus. Yeah. I don't know why they use that yeah, virus. Why, <laughs> of all the viruses, why would you use that one as an example? <laughs> We're going to put this inside you. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> it looks a lot like wow. HIV. Yeah, that's wow. really Trust suspect us. to use that. I, Here's the applicator. I'm a little nervous about no, that. No, so, um, so yeah, that's it. And it, I mean, there's, I'm, I'm, I'll, we'll obviously share the this link. This is it right here? Bro, look at that. Wow. That's a camera. So immediate, first off, I think, cool. Second thought, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, you're going to get spied on. Oh, yeah. You'll never know. It'll be inside you. Like, you'll, bro, you'll you, never you know. Have no idea. That's going to take, like, I could put that camera all over. Yeah, that's wild. Like, what are we going to do? I don't know. I mean, honestly, they probably already have them in insects. Yeah. <laughs> birds aren't real. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> birds aren't real. Look into it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Just saying. I'm just, just saying. I'm just, just saying. saying. Bro, I think mean, about that. Like a little. Genetically modified mosquitoes. Yeah, okay. dude. That's Stop crazy. There. So you know how like China has that, uh, that surveillance system or whatever? Yeah. And Americans are like, never, not here. Bro, I think I just put a bunch of shit like that everywhere you don't even see it no we don't have privacy anymore that's like a thing of the past i know you know speaking of ai i'm like so disappointed in you me to, to not admit admit you being wrong on what this happened? podcast why what did i say well what do you mean we just talked to jordan pearson that, it hasn't uh, happened yet. Yeah, exactly. don't, don't, yes it has this no, episode has this episode's going after that isn't it no 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 no, well, no. It does. i mean no, it's not, well, no, it's not. Not. hasn't happened yet it hasn't happened uh, yet. you have two why. smart people in your camp so yes, you, really you can be cocky that kind of smart really smart people yeah, yeah, in my camp really <laughs> this is now like, personal now it's me again tell me though when you when you guys heard him say it there was a part of you died didn't it just a no, bit. I, I, you know, I or did, you, did you feel so confident in your arrogance still that you went like um, Jordan Pearson's probably wrong? There is no limit to the confidence in my arrogance. <laughs> no, you know, okay, so here's here's the thing. What he said is true. I understand that problem. I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't think. I think that would be if we created our, like a robot that was multi-purpose. But we said a dishwashing that's robot. Just washing dishes. That's yeah. it. It's the same problem though. Yeah. It's the same, and that's the exact. So if it could just wash dishes, it could fix my. TV and plumbing and all that other shit. I just that doesn't matter. Like I think I think washing the dishes is actually going to be more difficult because yeah. it has to, the, the, with that kid that you took, might be right. That kid that was in, in taking AI. Listen, right? if you win, you don't have to give me a car anymore. For so, oh yes, <laughs> that's what I was really is searching that what you for. Want? You're yeah, not getting nothing me. Out of me the, so. Give me out of the car debt. <laughs> I, I, it was only I only gave you five years. Of oh, I want to see that, dude. Yeah, no. He's not I don't win. know. She's not going to win. Well, you know, it's funny, and I'm sure people are so tired of hearing that this argument that we keep going back and forth. But, I, but there's a it, it's like like tongue in cheek, right? It's it's playful, yeah. it's fun. I yeah. think it's interesting to think. It's and there's a lot of things to think about with AI. Like and, and yeah. there's there's certain things that we're watching evolve really fast, and then there's other things that like we don't realize. Like that's way more difficult. That's way more difficult than yeah. we imagine. Like as simple as being able, to, we we can we have these robots that do flips now and do cool stuff and spray down a, oh. a, a bathroom. Like everyone's like, oh my god! So like, but but like, to teach it to know the dude. difference between a clean dish and a dirty dish, we're Light years robotics, away from yeah, robotics is going to be the last thing to really progress. I I feel, but I mean, it, it, in terms of like uh, everything AI, like dude, everything software based, everything yeah. that functions that, yeah. AI is taking over. Yeah. It's it's like I mean, it's, it reminds me of the South Park episode. It's the it's the arms. The white, yeah, 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 it yeah. takes every job that yeah. uh, doesn't require arms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah the look, stuff look, that's look, but here's the other part. The other half is a commercially affordable trip to the moon 
right? Yeah. First of all, you have to prove that uh, we that, don't live in the firmament. Yeah. So. Or that we've ever even yeah. been to the moon, Adam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no idea. Exactly. Don't, don't get too about. cocky. Or that the right. government will allow us to go on the moon. You yeah. know there's a Nazi base on there? <laughs> yeah. They'll probably stop it <laughs> in its tracks. Yeah, Crazy it's... regulations will make it impossible. Uh, no, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Hey, hey speaking of AI, here's this. Want to hear some more scariness? Oh, oh God. please. Okay. They did a huge test with a bunch of people. And they showed them AI faces and real faces. Oh, boy. Okay. And you're and supposed they, to determine which one Which was one's real? real. Okay. okay. What do you guys think happened? Do you think they yeah, could determine they, which one's real, which one was no, fake? No. It, it was all cloudy, I bet. It's actually worse than that. The what? opposite? They, 80% of the time more, thought the AI faces oh were real. Oh, my God. What? Wow. How is that possible? They don't, they, can't, they don't understand. They think that the AI makes the faces more proportional. Therefore tricking our brain to thinking it's more real or something like that, but it doesn't matter. The point is hmm. a computer generated face more often than not appeared more real than a real face. Fuck. <laughs> that sucks. Like, okay. So obviously like the lighting and the, the contrast and like all that stuff. They matched, they had to have, everything like, was controlled. So you know what I think about right away? That's kind of scary about that. Uh, there's many things that are scary about that, but one of the things that I don't think we're probably even thinking about that's going to be interesting and that we'll see this unfold like really quick. We've already talked about how we've seen, there's already uh, Instagram pages of like yeah. mm -hmm. self-generated like, uh, you know, or, or AI. AI. Well, you've been getting DMs, I'm sure, by these AI like people. Okay, so think of that for a second. Now think of what I we've have. talked about, the, the toxicity of social media and how bad it is for men and women oh. and comparison and stuff like that. And we know that the algorithm, people like beauty and cars and asses and all these things like that. Yeah. And so what happens- <laughs> Throws asses in there. Yeah. <laughs> people do though, right? Shouldn't in the middle. It's, it's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> he says all the other ones loud. Beauty people, and cars. Asses, and asses. cars, you know, houses. So, okay. So think about uh, if all of a sudden somebody just starts flooding Instagram with as many of those or more of those than there are humans. And then like talk about how we're, it's already distorted, right? So a yeah. kid, a kid's image of uh, so, or even I mean, a person already did that, who wants so to get in shape, well. it's already distorted by the, the, the percentage of people that are really that fit. It's like, you think there's tons of them, but they're not. There's like, yeah. just go to a gym. You won't see anybody rip. No, go to Instagram. You'll see 10 people in five seconds through your yeah. feed. hundred percent Instagram would no do it because it, the, the user base would go up. Yeah. Yes. The, yeah, the numbers for their stock would go up. Like everything mm -hmm. would be a positive for them. It'd be a total negative. Hold on, Doug, are those the pictures? Yeah, so I'm playing this little game right now where I'm supposed to guess between the AI. So she's, she's fake on the right. She's fake. Yeah. I yeah. bet you she's not. No, no, I just, now I I just did it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, so I was wrong. So he's, I'm looking at these two now. Uh, he's fake he's, on the right. You think he's fake uh, on the right? No. Yeah. I do. I, I do on the right. Okay, too. I'm going to click it. Adam? Yeah. yeah. Wrong. Uh, okay. I told you. No, okay. he's Keep fake going. on the right. The way, no, you're right, actually. Yeah. By the way, I'm not guessing right. I'm no. just going with the opposite of what I think because I know what the study said now. No. <laughs> so I'm yeah, like, oh, right? real, yeah, yeah. So I'm supposed to click on the real one here. So, uh, okay. so yeah, you're right, Adam. Oh, he one. was. Okay. Okay, yeah. well, okay the real person. Looked... Which person is real? I, I would say the one on the left. No, I would... Again, I think the one on the right is real. Really? Okay, here, here goes one Adam. On the left. Well, it's not working. Oh, look. Oh, see, no, AI, it's, it's the one... Uh, AI heard us talking about it. Yeah, the one on the left is the real one. Yeah, okay. That's not true. okay. So anyway, so yeah. this study used the latest AI technology, and uh, this is a new development essentially. So all right, here's my question. So here's the speculation, right? The speculation is going to get is is this that media is going to become so cloudy, social media, real media, whatever, right? You, People anytime are you turn gonna on TV, beg for the, the, this online valid ID. We're gonna. Which is that's the that's what people are saying. Big push for that. That we're gonna we're gonna like beg the government to be the arbitrator of what's real. We're gonna want a government controlled oh, and run, like you know, um, you tell us you you put the seal of real. And by the screen. way, it, that that is gonna get pushed so fast because what's gonna happen when you start seeing this is there's gonna see people getting scammed by yeah. these Correct. fake things. Correct. Or, and and so people listening right now are like, oh no, we're not going to want all that. Sets it up for yeah. So you say like that until all of a sudden you get you get burned by ten thousand so dollars. Here's you give the to counter some fake AI thing. Yes, and yeah. now here's the counter argument. The counter argument is, well, yes, people may beg for that, but what might happen is all these private companies, because there may be a market demand for real people, are going to put in their own 
you know, uh, ways of, of, uh, confirming if something's real. So Instagram's gonna be like, look, we're going to tell you, and we're going to require that we show when something's fake and something's real. Now there's problems with both of them. The, the government one is, yeah. Okay. Ms. You know, government, you're going to tell us what's real and what's fake. That doesn't, that gives you a lot of power. The criticism of the market doing it is, is Instagram's best interests in showing us what we want to see or showing us yeah. what we think we want to see. Right. Because everybody says, I want to know what's real. I want to see what's real. But we like perfect. Money, like engagement, yeah. um, and keeping you on the platform as long as possible. That's right. There's no, uh, I mean, there's no reason why they would need to really be super honest I, and transparent Same, about same reason why so they haven't cleaned out the initially, fake. Initially, yes. But okay. if, I mean, if you, if you have faith in, in, in free markets, like I think we do, eventually even that would get well. So let's say like your point, like uh, the, the obvious is not the government. I think that's, a, yeah. I think everyone's equal, but let's say like uh, Instagram. So they keep all the fake AI out, but then they're still feeding the algorithm to, to, to give you not necessarily what's completely authentic and real to the reality, right? For you. Mm. And so then that still opens the opportunity for somebody else to compete that because they've been found out. And, and that's their, that's their pitch. You are gonna. We're not gonna feed you what's best for our algo. We're gonna feed you what truly you're like. What you know? What I'm saying whatever that spiel is to counter that. And when enough people become aware, that opens the door for a competitor to do it more in a more authentic. And an example of this, okay, <laughs> is in what we do: authentic content. Okay, is that it, it would be in our best interest to do before and afters. It'd be in our best interest to do challenges. It would be in our best interest to uh, lie to people about how fast they're going to yeah. see results, right? It would be in our best interest. But why we have survived and why we continue to grow and have success in this company is we've stayed true to that. And over time, even though we're not bigger than Beachbody, we're not bigger than some of these famous names and brands, yeah. slowly the, the but track surely- The record speaks That's itself. right. A, someone comes through the, the experience and goes, you know what? They're not this, they're not that, but I, I, I trust them. I, I, believe I, them. I, I, I would love to- <sighs> You know, I, I, my hopeful side would like says that, but the problem with that is that, like, I'll give you the example of like fake hmm. follower counts. Okay, yeah. if you ask people, do you wish Instagram cracked down on fake followers and accounts with fake followers and whatever? And everybody would say yes. I don't want that shit. But the reality is, everybody yeah. likes their All fake, the influencers bloated. Don't like that. That's right. And so Instagram doesn't <laughs> yeah. really, they don't really check. Yeah. They don't really do it because well, you like the fact that you, you know that is, is is this why well okay you know the NFT we all scoffed at that initially yeah. but like what if that becomes something where they can trace like sort of whatever image it is it's authenticated God, it that's follows the best them answer. through uh, all the way so you can actually cross check it to know if it's a real That would or not. be that would be good like if like if like through blockchain blockchain might would, be the yeah. might be the answer right. actually that's pretty good and that'd be more of a decentralized approach. My fear is that we're going to give all the power to one person yeah. and that person's going to have a lot oh, of power. Yeah, they know. will manipulate the media to their whatever they want. And that's a lot of scary power. For sure somebody. it's setting up in that direction. Because oh. any anytime it's it's in that, like you always got to look at like who's going to benefit the end. Like who's, is, is it a power grab and where's it coming from? I don't know if to me the, the, the less intervention, the better. The more people that we allow to try and answer it for us versus allowing it to unfold the way it's supposed to unfold and us to figure it out. Unfortunately, there tends to be growing pains with that yeah. where we got to learn the hard way and go like, oh, but, Scary time. but at the end of the day, innovating. at the end of the day, collectively, I have faith in humanity that it, as a whole, we're smart. Maybe not yeah. as some individuals are, but as a whole, we're pretty smart and we'll eventually figure that stuff out. There you see what's happening with, uh, you know, speaking of this stuff of like AI, is the uh, Spotify, I think, is cracking down big time on it. I forget what other streaming platforms, because there's been a massive disruption in that space for streaming farms and stuff. Uh, and so oh, wait, and, explain that. And they couldn't figure out how to get, get past it because the people that were creating these streaming farms mm. found a way to also hack it to where it looks like it's coming from a million different so IP explain addresses. the streaming farm. So, so streaming farm are these places in like you know, random places in the world yeah. where they set up all these iPhones where there's like thou tens of thousands like, of them. I don't know if the Philippines or like- there, Yeah, Thailand, places like that. Yeah. And then it runs through like this server that they then can- make that server look like it has all these different IP addresses all over the world so that they can't reverse it. Because the original, like, you could see an IP address. So they would go like, oh, if there's all these coming from one, we know there's a problem yeah. there. But these streaming farms have learned ways around that to be make it look like all mm. 10,000 streams are unique all over the world. And so mm. these companies are having a hard time 
being able to prove whether it's fake or not. Now, fake. who are the people that are that are using the streaming farms? I'm assuming artists. it's the content creators. Yeah, artists. Because they get paid based off of yeah. how many. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And there's lots of rumors that it's some of the biggest name ones that did it because they had all the connections and pool and the money to start with you it. Know, and it's keeping down the ones that have been see, trying to organically do it. Yeah, my brain always goes there with like how these people get so insanely popular, like so like the like immediate stardom, you know, like there's there's like engineered factors like all over the place to help elevate people when they want to. Well, so this might be a little too, uh, I don't know, personal business, uh, but, you know, we, I wonder if, because we convert, for people that know, like obviously we're a sponsored podcast and for our sponsors, uh, we're all, typically one of the highest converting, if not the highest converting in, in proportion to our size. In fact, we convert better than some of the most popular podcasts in the world. And I wonder if part of that is because Every listener we have is like, Real. we don't do, yeah, because even our Instagram follower, you look at our engagement, like, yeah. and I look at other pages and you can tell they don't have real followers half the time, actually mm -hmm. more than half the time. I wonder if that's one of the reasons I, why. 100%. Yeah. And I think that there's, there's two things that are happening there too. One, the ones that are there are real. And then because you have such an authentic message and trust and loyalty, there's that, that, right. then you have an, an even uh, higher percentage of people that are going to take your advice, trust you and go do those things. So if you have somebody who's, let's say 10 times bigger than us and 20% of their you know, following is fake. They're still significantly yeah. organically bigger than us, but they also maybe they don't have as much of trust as, as somebody who has built it organically, the, you know, the slower way or what about that. But that exists a lot in, in the space. There's a lot of fluff and fake numbers. And mm -hmm. I mean, how many times have you guys, we've now, I mean, I don't know how many times I've been blown away by somebody who I think is going to be like, this business savant or they're going to have like all this success because they have on social media, yeah. they appear, they, they, they the appear numbers are crazy. Yeah. They appear to be massive. And then you get with them in the room and you're like, Oh dude, this, no, yeah. they're not at all. Oh. Yeah. So that it's like those storefronts, yep. uh, those business displays in like North Korea, you know, when they take, when they take like, uh, you know, foreign diplomats over to kind of show them around or foreign press, They'll mm -hmm. take them through, and Russia, the Soviet Union did this well. They'll take them through. They've like built facades. Fake so, town. Yeah, it looks like a full building, and it's just yep. like the front of the building oh. that they're walking past. Oh, what like, was that movie? It's crazy, what was dude. that movie with the Soviet Union where there was the, like, they were killing farmers in, in Ukraine, and uh, reporters were trying to report on it, and they put them on a train, drive them through, and along the railroad were. Fake stores, yes, literally fake. Like it was like it was like just a wall, only this deep. <laughs> yeah, because somebody pretending to sweep. Yeah, yeah. No, really. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In fact, a, one, a guy, yeah, bro. a guy escaped the train and he went through and discovered all these fake towns and stuff. North Korea does that where they'll it's, have they'll have a grocery a store facade. with all these products. And literally, there's people. Well, who in there did we just talk to? Yes, yeah, Jordan Peterson. Told us about that. Oh, was that yeah, Peterson talking about that? He, he we talked, talked about, about the, the pen yeah. in North Korea and like how even that uh, it was fake. Was just fake. For display. Just the pen, like, didn't even have real. That's right. It. He was talking about that they they put on a facade that their markets are doing so well. That they even have like these like high stores, end stores. Yeah. That have all this stuff, but, but the nobody, shoppers are just walking. Yeah, around. The, the shoppers are just yeah, walking do, around. We, nobody ever really purchases <laughs> anything. Like I thought, that's so wild. Yeah, it's I want to see that. Dude, actually, it's, it's, it's there's like, a part of me that wants to see that. Oh, crazy. dude, you should look into like people will write about what they're required to do when they go to North Korea. They're like so tightly monitored. And if you pull out a phone camera to take a picture, yeah, they'll take your phone and smash it or throw your ass in jail. So very, very strict. With what they do. Yeah, with so nobody knows. Well, if we ever get Rodman on here, we'll have to pick his uh, brain about his experience oh, there. Yeah. yeah. He's you, he's you, met with some of the craziest people in the world. How does he get him? I don't know. I who, don't know. who? Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like Putin. And I mean, he's met with like some some pretty substantial I feel people. like he's such a rep. I mean, I'm such a huge fan, right? It's the reason why he's behind me. So I thought of his, I told you his book was like life changing for me. And when I was, when I was in sixth grade, like, I think he is just a represent. I don't care what culture you come from like that. But that that idea of I'm gonna do whatever I want to do, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be right. as bad. His book yeah. was as bad as I want to be. His own ideas, yeah, and like and like truly like not following anyone. I mean, there's so many things that he did trend setting wise. It's that, so funny because now it wouldn't even seem it would not seem no, weird at all. It no. wouldn't seem like he no, wore a like wedding dress. The course now you wear a wedding dress. Everyone's like, oh, <laughs> you like everyone else. Celebrated. Everybody's yeah. like, yeah, he yeah. did it back when it was like he it, yeah, it And was, it's funny you say that, and that's a great example of like when he did it. I had this like that's cool, and I respected him 
because nobody was doing it. Yeah. Now when I see people do a, a yeah. lot of this stuff, it's just like, it's like you're, uh, you're 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 copying. You're not yeah, you're not yeah. as original yeah. as you're you're trying to play it out to be. Like there was somebody who who paved this way before, and so that's why I think he's being cool now is like being a square. Yeah, yeah. Like, like <laughs> real straight laced. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, I just, you know, I don't do anything. It's like praying crazy. before the game. Yeah. Oh, that guy. <laughs> you rebel, dude. dude. What's wrong with yeah. him? Doug, can you look up when Dennis Robin wore the famous dress? Where did he wear it? It was a wedding dress. Yeah, it was a wedding dress. And he wore he it. He wore it on the cover. He wore it for cover. a photo shoot. Was that was with, no, he showed, was with Madonna? He, sh right? he showed up. I don't uh, think it was it just that or was it something else? I, th I feel like he, he mm. showed up to an event. He did show up to an event. I can't remember what event it was, and I should know this. Um, and I and I know he did a photo. Was this shoot in the nineties? Could have been like a oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this is well, what am I in sixth grade? Because he wrote about it in his book, so it had to be. Right yeah, that was in nineteen ninety six. Bro, a, listen, a book this, signing. This was oh, a, a book it was a book, it was a book signing. signing. Okay, this is a, it. Was for his book, as bad as I want to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think you, yes. Okay, everybody needs to think about this for a second. He was a a alpha yeah. NBA. Yeah. Badass. Mega athlete, yeah. B a badass. And this is in 1996. That's a long time ago. And he literally showed up to book signing wearing a woman's wedding dress. I know. Yeah. Okay, so, so you, you think you're cool. Yeah. Like, that dude. Yeah. Dude. Well, what is he? 6'6", six, six, 200 yeah. something. Like, yeah, there he is. He's I like, uh, I dare you to say some shit to him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I would just feel no, like say it, dude. My, my eyes wouldn't even be able to register what, was, what I was looking at. It's, I mean, it, you know, it's he's he's a bit of a sad story, too, though. Like, he's definitely yeah. mentally tortured and a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I just, and I, I first fell in love with his game, right? Like, the way he plays the game of basketball is just. Mm -hmm. it, well, he was like rebound champ. Oh, yeah, he was just such a role player. Yeah, yeah, one of the best examples. Selfless, right? Like he didn't have to be. He didn't have to be the guy scoring the ball. Yeah. Like he played. He played defense harder than them or anybody. And his game was. He studied the game. I don't know if I ever told you guys this. Like he, he studied the game of rebounding. So you bring a rebound, and that was what he was known yeah. for, right? So he's one of the greatest rebounders of all time. Yeah, and he did something I never have heard anybody else do. And and I forget who he was shooting around with one before the warm up of a game. And the, his teammate was like, "What are you doing?" And he could see he could see that he was focusing on everybody else. And he's like, he counts the spins, the rotations of oh, the ball, and he knows where it's going to go between each guy. So I know that when uh, you know when John Stockton shoots it, it rotates six times before it hits the rim. I know when so and so shoots it, it it rotates twelve well, times. Yeah, and well, if it true. rotates twelve times, it's going to kick off three feet further back. If it rotates six times, it's going to be shorter to this wow. side. Wow! Like, yes, the whole method. So madness. and he would study it that much that of course in the real game he's probably not. But you've seen it enough times that you your body. You know what's has interesting enough, yeah, about that? People predictive. People see that and they're like, oh, that's like that's such an awesome. It's probably, I mean, it's such a, a level of hyper focus. Oh yeah, that you probably can't. You probably have trouble focusing on anything else when you're that yeah. obsessed, which well, makes you excellent. Right? And nobody else in the game was like focused in that direction. Yes, I mean, that that's what made it so unique too. Because it's like, who's? It's not the glory, you know. The, like what he's doing is like massively important and mm. like way underlooked. And and so for him to do that, it was even more of like. I mean that that was like profound, dude. You know, speaking of this, I'm so glad we get to do this for a split moment. Right? I know so, right? well, the, content, the content that I get to listen to. And watch <laughs> you got thirty. So seconds. I actually, yeah, <laughs> the time is almost up. I'll get it in there real quick. You actually, you both will really appreciate this. I just saw an interview with, and I can't think of the guy's name. I'll, I'll see if I shared the clip. Uh, who uh, used to train Jordan back in the days and. One of the things, this was before any of the tech that we have now, this is before, and we talk about uh, the trainers and coaches being so horrible back in the days. And, and even today, like these guys, these professional athletes hiring the wrong guy, they actually had figured out like load management back all the way back then. And that he would watch a tape of a game. So afterwards, we said had to record it on a beta disc. And then I'd go back and I would count how many times he cut left versus how many times he cut right. Oh, wow. How many times he used his left hand versus how many times he used his right hand. And then we to would train him proportionally. Uh, we would oh, train, wow. we would adjust the training in the gym. He would shift well, the weights level, yeah. on what side. That he was, is, I had no idea they were doing that. That's very forward thinking. Way forward training. thinking. I mean, yeah. we have tools now that do a lot of this stuff so that we can measure the load wow. management on these athletes. But to think that Jordan's guy, I didn't know did I had no idea. Never heard that story before. Yeah. He was being interviewed by somebody, mm. and he were they were talking about how he used to do it by hand. He used to sit there and count. Okay, oh we God. used your right hand, you know, one thousand seven hundred fifty times. We yeah. used your left hand, one thousand four hundred. So when we train, we're going to do this. Like that's wild, isn't that's it? So that's crazy. Of, isn't that cool? Yeah, that's so smart. That's, that's back in the nineties. 
Yeah, dude. Wow. Isn't that beta cool? Disc. That'd be early 90s. Yeah, Holy yeah. Cow. Isn't that cool? Yeah, you guys know the story cool. behind beta, right? Why that failed? You know it was better than VCR? VHS, the, sorry. The the big uh, the big disc. I did hear that, yeah. So what, what was v the crash? People like young people are like, what are they talking about? <laughs> yeah. All right. Back in the day, Big we used track. to watch things on a VHS tape. And there was a competitor to it in the early days called Beta, which was smaller. I thought it was Beta was the big disc. No, no, no. Oh, it wasn't. Beta was a smaller tape. It looked like a VHS, but smaller. Oh, what was the big those were laser, laser discs. Laser discs. Oh, I thought that was called yeah. Beta. My yeah. bad. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so that was after VCR. So Beta were little. They were smaller. They look like VHS tape. Maybe, but Doug, many. you can look up VHS versus Beta and uh, connect the TV too because I think it's disconnected. But it's smaller. It had better sound, better clarity, fit more on smaller tape. So you think, well, how the hell did they lose? Because VHS obviously dominated and Beta went out of business. Yeah. Beta uh, made an exclusive deal with Sony and said, we will not... Do anything else except with Sony beta mm -hmm. players. We will not create these that work with other players. VHS said, we'll we'll let it work with any player that wants to work with us. And there it is. Yeah, see the top, the top left one? And is that that's uh, the reason why it died? That's because they made a stupid business decision. Wasn't that the same case with Blu-ray and um uh, Something similar. whatever the yeah, the competitor was to that? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was um HD, right? HD was, DVD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, HD yeah, yeah, yeah. DVD. So yeah. isn't that still, go, like, actually, I, you know, you were talking about this. That's actually what was going through my head. It's like, I haven't looked that up in a while to see how the competition between Blu-ray and HD DVDs are still going. Did, did I mean, streaming has got to be, I mean, do, they, do people- I, even, People still buy Blu-rays. You could still get go to Best Buy and buy a Blu-ray. It's Blu kind of smart to do that because, you know, sometimes it's finicky, like these, these streaming services, like in your- uh, whatever, if your internet or something is spotty, I swear, mm -hmm. like I, I, I mean, I, I bought, still have to have, I bought some, I, so I went, which is so funny because you can go now and for next to nothing, get a really good Sony high definition. Oh, Blu-ray player. Yeah. Like, does it now, do you have to plug it in the TV or is it wireless? You have to plug it in the okay. TV. Okay. Uh, so I went and bought, I bought one because when we, well, right when we moved to this, this, this most recent house. Uh, we didn't have any any internet connected, and they weren't going to be out for like, scheduled for like two weeks. And I'm like, oh my god, two weeks, and couldn't stream anything. You know, yeah. no internet, can't do. No. Like, you forget. You're like, oh my god, we like, we have no, we can't watch a show, we can't do anything. And so I told, which was fine for like a week or so. Then I'm like, okay, like it would be nice Friday night to like watch a movie or something. So I'm like, I'm gonna go see what the. And I'm like, they were like nothing. It was like thirty bucks or something. I can Isn't get that crazy. It. Like a Blu-ray disc, and they got like five or six. Do you remember how much those cost? The Blu-ray. Oh, yeah. oh Blu-rays were like four hundred okay, something. Nothing back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I was so mad. I sold all of those, dude. For oh. Nothing. Oh, no, I gave mine practically away too. I mean, they're. Mm. Who knows? I, I doubt they're going to be worth very much money in the in the future or not. Did you look up, Doug, what happened with the Blu-ray or HD DVD? Like if there was Blu-ray versus what uh, is it? HD, HD DVD. I yeah, think that's I'm right. Sure, that's right. Yeah, I'm interested to see because I think that was the same thing, right? It was yeah. like we made an exclusive deal. Like you don't learn your lesson from Beta. Let's see. Uh, Blu-ray is a step ahead with its okay better imagery. Uh, maybe because it was better then. What one thing I saw between the two is that Sony owned Blu-ray. And Toshiba owned HD DVD, and okay. Sony as a company just once again Sony you win had much more money than Toshiba did as they grew. Oh, uh, okay. And and Blu-ray was, I mean, as far as I remember, Blu-ray was always a higher quality. You gotta love you gotta love markets because yeah. we don't just get one new way to show media. We get two or three competitors. Yeah, it like happens at the same time. And we get to pick like. one. Well, it just shows you and how- And then also, a Blu-ray player was $400 back when money was worth more too. Yeah, yeah. And now you went for 30 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's crazy. I mean, it just shows you too, like just how massive our consumer market is that like, yeah. if, so, like I mean, there's a huge business and you know, that's actually a model that a lot of people follow is they'll look for things that haven't made it to the States that are proven somewhere else. And that's like mm. a guaranteed model. Like we mm. have enough of a- Because you've already tested it. Yeah, it's been tested somewhere else. It, it worked. It's like, there's a, I, you know, we brought this up when we were in London. I was so surprised by the lack of energy drinks they had there. Oh yeah. Did you notice that? It was just like Monster. That was it. Monster or Red Bull. The Red Bull. Was that it? was it. Those are like, the only two, the like in our, in, in, and oh, I don't know, maybe the energy drink market period. Oh yeah. yeah. Not, yeah oh yeah. No, that. here in the US, you go to yeah, a, we joked about any that. gas sorry, station, any seven. Coffee shops are weak. Was, you know, any, I hate to piss people off. But, <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's, you guys did not great. You guys didn't like the coffee, which is no, astounding because like, you're in Europe. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah, like, both you guys hate it. I don't, I don't drink coffee, but you guys hated the coffee. Yeah, no, I didn't have a good we've, coffee. We've I didn't have a good that out energy out experience, period. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I didn't sleep very well. Maybe they Couldn't just sleep better than us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're just Americans like, need. Yeah, yeah, they don't need as much, yeah. like, But stimulus. I mean, I thought that was, we went to a lot of different, you know, places that would carry like an convenience stores. Yeah, and they only had Red Bull. They only had, mo and a very limited selection of that. I mean, you in the U.S., you go to a gas station, you go there's to like a, six several different brands. At least yeah. that. It's there's a whole like section of just so interesting how we like our drugs. Here. How much yeah, more we, we have here versus there. Do. I mean, it also yeah. I think speaks to the opportunity that is over there for a competitor to yep. sneak in and do. That. I know we were talking about that. Yeah, maybe I'll start a supplement company there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you might be able to get me to get okay. it. <laughs> Come on, guys. Hey, so you want to hear something wild? So I just read in uh, God, what what was I? I think it was. I don't remember what what magazine it was, but I uh, online I pulled up this article for the first time ever. This is a trip for the first time ever. Scientists witnessed chimpanzees killing gorillas. What? No way. Yes. So How? chimpanzees are our closest relatives, right? And they- they They're vicious. They sure. wage war. Yeah. They actually wage war against each other and have and they, tactics. They eat each other too oh, after they win. They're fucking vicious, right? Yeah. They're, and they and they, they have tactics where they'll, they'll- Strategies for waging war. So they actually know how to organize. Well, that's what they do with the gorillas. So researchers oh, heard wow. screaming that they're like, oh my God, that sounds like what chimps do when they fight and when they go to war. So they went and found them. And the chimps had organized and surrounded the gorillas. And it was like a ratio of 27 to five. So 27 Bro. chimps to five gorillas. Can we put this on the bingo board for and apocalyptic uh, <laughs> things about to happen? You know, Planet of the Apes uh, yeah. uh, style. They're organizing, you know. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, dude. So they, they, I guess they got, to, they organized, got together and. 27 chimps got together and killed oh my five gorillas. That's dude. crazy. What? That's fucked up. Yeah, that is crazy. And I mean, especially if you're a gorilla, because you're just so big. Oh, I so want to see it. Like, I want to see it. I want to see it. Can you pull it up? Like, see crazy. if there's a video. That would be. This has to be like the only time they've ever seen an encounter dude, like this. This is the first, is the first witness. Pure one. muscle. Like, that thing is not. Messing around. It is, but maybe gorillas are just more peaceful. Well, 20 and chimps are just like 20 something to five is a big difference. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, look and at it's humans. not like chimps are weak. Like, like well, more, more defensive, you mean? Like, yeah. Well, yeah, look at humans. Like, we are pussies in the animal world. There's, oh, there almost sure. isn't an animal yeah. that can't kick our ass. And uh, yet, yeah. we, you know, beat the crap out of everyone because of our warlike you know, yeah. nature and how we organize. For sure. And chimps are, you know, they, they organize in that way. Did you find it? Oh. <gasps> They do, and I think too they've shown oh, that they use infant. tools. No, infant that's not the, the same thing that I read. But I don't know, haven't they anyway. haven't they shown that they've been able to figure out like tools on their own too? Yeah, yeah. And, and that was to, a little yeah. crazy. Like they, that that's been the only species that's like they they've studied that has evolved a little bit. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They've seen them actually evolve their skills yeah. and pass them on. Which is I don't think this is the same one. Interesting. Doug. Yeah. But um. Anyway. Yeah, I know, they're I like this is like they're teaming up on an infant. I believe right you said here. like 27, 20? it was 27 chimps to five uh, oh gorillas. My God. I know gorillas are terrifying, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, but when you, you know, chimps appear, you ever see are, that one video where um, uh, this guy's like they're, they're doing like um, a tour, and then a guy was just kind of a little bit close and. A gorilla comes by and then just grabs his leg and just starts dragging yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a, 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 a chuckle with him. <laughs> he couldn't do anything about it. You're like, ah, he was a tour guide. Yeah. Like telling everybody, yeah, fight. He just, <laughs> it just walked by and grabbed. You're coming with me. Yeah, yeah, it just grabbed his leg. Like, like he was like his blankie or something. Uh, do you remember that woman who had a pet <clears throat> chimp, and she gave the pet chimp uh, wine and Xanax? Do you guys remember this? Oh yeah, and then she, it, the, it ripped off her face. Yeah, it went crazy and ripped and like not like. Kind of like that's it's when we were podcasting. Didn't you have someone bring that? Someone that brought that up one day, a long time ago. I'm sorry, dude. I know. What was she way, doing with that? Is she like in bed, they're sleeping. With you? Don't yeah, you always really think like about that? So, I'm what I, was she doing? I follow like, a bunch suspect. of pages. I follow a bunch of pages where, uh, because I love she was getting some of that monkey fascinated <laughs> with these guys that have <laughs> this is so bad, <laughs> fascinated with these guys that have like these big cats as pets, you know, yeah. what I'm saying to the house, like. I mean, and dudes be putting their their head in their mouth. And I'm like, never surprised rest. when I read some shit like "man mauled by his pet lion." <laughs> 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 I 
I know. Like, what the? F- of course, dude. <laughs> I'm more surprised when man is not mauled. Right. So, yes, that's yeah. surprising. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, like, that could be. Shit. That could well, be. A about, like, I saw that cougar coming in to like wake the guy up. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh my god, his yeah. face is this big. Yeah. You know. I know. I so I trip out when I see. I know. That, but dude. that she definitely was having sex with that monkey. Oh, no oh way. I mean, there's no question. Oh there's no. Why, why would you give I a mean, monkey wine and Xanax? You're like, chill out, baby. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have some. Well, we saw even the sign. Scientist, you know, lady that was uh, jerking off dolphins. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's, yep. um, it's, it's interesting. Some, yeah, some yeah. Weird, people are weird. Some weird Let's people. keep that illegal, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know what they're going to try to do next. They're going to yeah. try to pass some laws. Yeah. Well, speaking of fighting and stuff, someone put notes up there. Daycare fights? What happened? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> daycare fights? That sounds. Is that like bum fights? Somewhere. Like, I don't know if it's in the Where's the viral YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> pull up daycare fights. It, honestly. I'm serious. Pull it up. It's like. Is that really a real thing? Yeah. There's these two people that were running a daycare that got. Busted because no, don't tell they me. literally started to allow these kids to work it out based <laughs> no, off of fighting no, each other, they, and no, then turned it didn't. into like a thing <laughs> oh, where they're like they pitting these no, kids together, having them no, fight at a daycare. Hey, you bad hey that's kind of like what a, like a bad teenage boy version of you would do. Some Dude, shit like th- that. This sounds like a horrible like Vince Vaughn movie it's or all something. The Big Brothers are all the yeah. Big Brothers of the kids running. This oh, thing? <laughs> oh my god! Oh. I'm still right. Like, Bro, hey. Come on, I dude. just picture like they have like a little like a little ring. Look know? at you, look at this U.S. daycare workers arrested for running fight ring involved three year olds. Three year old, three year old. Like, is it really considered a fight ring at that point? Like, yeah, dude, you imagine like a little. Tell me, we have some clips of them caught up. I want to see. I want to see three year olds fight. I mean, I can't be that bad, right? They're, no, right. It yeah. can't be that bad. I mean, I see three year olds fight all the time. I have a three year old. Yeah, know? like. Wow. I mean, okay, so maybe the kids. Okay, so how they get found out? There's a fine. Know? There's a fine line here, right? So there's, a, there's a fine line of like where this is like a, a somewhat understandable, then borderline. Mm-hmm. This is completely. No, un- un- that, what's understandable? Wait, no, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> listen. Okay, <laughs> Adam, do you not do you not think when we back in the, <laughs> back in the days that we if if kids started to to get into it that they, you don't think that we probably allowed them to settle it? You like, think parents? Out. You think when it, you I feel think like it was hundreds of you think yeah? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's right. That's where the crossing the line is like yeah. putting them in a ring and be like <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know like cockfighting. fighting you're, you're, you're like this and yeah, yeah you're doing this with them to try and get them pissed like they off they both had their own little like corners yeah, and they're like coaching them like, that's yeah. over oh, that's a video coming. okay that's over the top but oh, wow. if it was you know two kids scuffling you're like hey let's see oh, how this gets work it out that's different because maybe they're not going to fight they're just going to yell that's or right. cry or whatever right right so that's right this is they're like violent they're yeah, they're, violence. they're blocking them off with Lego or linking yeah. logs and like you're, and yeah. you're encouraging oh my god dude, dude, look just, at the picture dude, I, like, I, <laughs> oh, oh my god, god what are they doing they give him a glove and, they and put it, a glove on them so they, they give them one glove and they're and they're just punching each other yeah, you don't encourage that. What? Behavior. Yeah, yeah. No. But this, that kid can fight though, huh? I think that kid's kid. got skills. How's he know that? Yeah, he's I mean the next Conor McGregor. Yeah, that's he's got. Yeah, there's something. That kid's there. like, no. He's like, no. Let him finish him. No, no, <laughs> finish him. I mean, there's no dance. <laughs> Listen, this is terrible. Like, why would you encourage kids to do that's, that as an adult? Yeah. They I obviously gave each shitty, kid a glove and, and then put. It like, it if I was my kid, I would be whether my kid was on top or on bottom. Although if he was on top, there'd be a little bit of pride. On, but I'd still like, be mad. I'd me, be so tell mad. You don't get weird red flag vibes like going into a dick. You wouldn't be able to like sniff out a I little know. bit of like well, the picture of the shenanigans. You know, like yeah, they look suspect out the gate. Gates, the owners look like they yeah. do some shit like There's that. Some, it's some shadiness there already oh, that you're boy. like, what? That would make me furious. <laughs> They're duking yeah. it out, oh, yeah. Little God. gloves, and, and the, each kid had a glove, so that yeah. that was organized, right? That's that, my point was like, you know, you're in a daycare. There's two kids, and there's two kids fighting over a toy, and like going, like, hey, hold on, let's see if they settle, let them settle yeah. this, let's yeah. see what happens. You yeah, know? But that was way beyond. Yeah, settling. no, that was that was they were cheering them on, get them. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm like, oh. yeah, like disgust and, and uh, work it how out. Much, how much? How in trouble did they get? Did they, they? Oh, your ass is. You better go to jail, bro. That's, oh, yeah, that's childish. better. But I mean, you know how our fucking legal I system know, is bro. sometimes, you know. Uh, Weird. So some people that should be in jail for life are out really early, and people that get life are like ridiculous. You know? Oh, dude, that's no doubt. It's, I hate it. I used to, especially when when weed was really punished criminally. I used to hate seeing these articles with like, dude molests children, gets you know probation. Guy has an ounce of weed, goes to jail for five. That's years. what I mean. That's yeah. exactly the ex- hell? That's exact example I'm talking about. Yeah. It's crazy that we have. Don't, don't we still have some people that are in prison over like some bullshit? Dude, marijuana. Still, place, right? how is it that anything like any crime offense against children shouldn't be the most punished? Most punished. Yeah. Period. Like that should just be like every every state everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But no. Crimes against people, physical harm <clears throat> or abuse should be punished highly. To children 
should be punished the most. Extra. Hard. Yeah. Period. End of story. Yeah. yeah. You know, Whatever speaking saying. of other states and stuff like that, a uh, little shout out. I gave this shout out already to a buddy, but I'm going to do it again and also shout out two things with it. So um, I mentioned maybe like, I don't know, a couple months ago, I talked to you guys about a guy that I follow online. His handle is Kendrick underscore barbecue. Oh, yeah. Love his stuff, right? So we ended up, he, and he didn't know who we were actually a bunch of people actually reached out to him and then like since then we've become friends and connected and everything like that he's sponsored by traeger Gr grills we all have traegers and love traeger and uh you know i told him oh man we used to have a deal with him a long time ago i gotta get reconnected and i said i want to i want to put one up in our park city house and he's like dude i got you and then uh, that was kind of the end of the conversation like literally like a couple weeks later calls me up and like sends me this video of like the top of the line, iron grill, all the bolt-ons, like sick. this whole sick setup. And he drives an hour from his house to over to Park City early in the morning, sets it all up for us, gets it all oh, good wow. to go. Yeah, dude. So, and I, you know, I, I, he, after he did it, I was like, dude, you do not have to do that. You know, I would have paid for this and let me do something for you. And he's like, no, not at all. He goes, you know what, Adam? He's like, I've been doing this social media game for almost 10 years now. I've had the opportunity I could have been on some cooking shows. I've had the opportunity to do podcasts, turned all that stuff down. He goes, you know, unfortunately in this world, so many people do things because they, that was transactional only. Oh, like wow. they want something in return only. Mm. And he goes, the organic shout out that you guys did for me when I didn't even know who you were and stuff like that. He's like, that's one of the most real things that someone has, I've encountered do, since I've been doing all this stuff. And wow. I just appreciate and that. The so, irony is because he's this way, we're giving him a shout out. Oh we yeah. Wanna, we want to mean, him, we want to send people his way. Right? And, and so just, there's also a lesson there. I feel like for oh, the younger generation that's coming up there. in this yeah. space, you know, who else reminds me of this is our good friend, Don Saladino. Totally. Yeah. Same. We, he we, is a hundred percent. Yeah. And I, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this without giving away too much of his inf personal information. But, you know, he has the opportunity. He, out of any trainer I've ever met, I've never met anybody who has trained more famous people than he has. Yeah, like so he's got A-list celebrities. A-list, a whole bunch yeah. of them. Yep. And one of the things he's notorious for doing is when they try and pay him, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, just, you know, get me later. And he totally does not. And then when they're like, hey, you want to take a picture? He's like, no, 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 this is your private time. I'm not. And it's so smart because most people would, if they – train one of these a-list actors would be jumping on the opportunity to take a photo with them of course. Right. to post them online to clout chase you know, shows with them right or yeah. oh a huge opportunity to make a lot of money because this person has a lot of money so i can charge them twice what i did like he's the opposite on both those things yep. and as you can see it served him very well there's a reason yeah. why the he trains is it's, it's genuine yes yeah. he's genuine it's not for anything yeah, then that's he's not point. angling. He's not. He doesn't. Have, he's not manipulating. He's just like he knows. He's he's good at what he does. He's a good. He's a genuine good dude. And I and I believe that if if you stay consistent with that, it doesn't mean you're not going to run into slime balls and manipulative people and people that aren't going to reciprocate the 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 good yeah. the good. People will take advantage. But one out of ten will, and the one that out of ten will, I promise you, is so worth it and totally. and yep. if you live your life that way i promise that you'll live in a place of abundance it just takes time and consistency and it's got to come from the right place that's right well, so who's the kendrick yeah. where, yeah. where do we go that where, where's the the link for, for so trigger. kendrick is kendrick is kendrick underscore barbecue is his handle if you're not following traeger grills you got to do that but kendrick has got like all the sick recipes awesome. so yeah. check that all out all right what is butcher box well this is a company that takes grass-fed meats, delicious grass-fed meats, wild-caught fish, heritage pork, delivers it to your door. So it eliminates middleman. You get great prices on very healthy cuts of meat. And right now, if you sign up at ButcherBox, if you go through our link, that's butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you can choose a steak that they will put in your box for free for a year. I'm serious. This is no joke. This is a huge discount. So what are the steaks? You got New York strip, uh, filet mignon and ribeyes. You like the way I said filet mignon, Justin? Mignon. I said it real good. Anyway, you can put one of those in your box for free for an entire year, but you got to go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Bruce from Texas. Bruce, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, how are y'all? Good, good. good. Up, Bruce. Good, good. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Big fan of the show and Worked through a few of the programs before the map stuff and uh, just for everybody listening, it's, it's legit. It works. Don't overthink it. Just, uh, 
just follow the programming. And, and uh, I think from listening to you guys now for a couple of few years, I, you start to get the wisdom behind, uh, you know, how you guys have set the things up. So thank you. Thank you, awesome, Bruce. We'll man. send you your check next week. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's going yeah. on Instagram. Discount right code Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, okay. So my, my question is this, it seems like um, lately you guys had just happened to comment lately on training to failure a few times. And my question is, um, you know, just for us regular folks, if y'all can just kind of talk about the difference between and really just practically, like, how does it feel when you're in the workout, the difference between training to failure, as opposed to, you know, just regular progressive overload, trying to push a little bit more, maybe a little bit more uh, weight this week, but I'm, I'm, I'm failing, you know, on that last rep of the second set, and I'm failing, as in I can't, you know, lift it all the way, uh, the last few reps of the third set, you know, and so, uh, cause I understand your guys kind of advice on training to failure is it could be beneficial, but certainly not the centerpiece. And so just for regular guy going through his regular every week workouts, how can I know that I'm not, that I'm, I'm just pushing myself, but I'm not inadvertently falling over into training to failure, which as I understand it, if that's too much of what you're doing, it can actually be detrimental. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, let's talk about progressive overload uh, first. So, and, the, and the difference between that and yeah, failure. So progressive overload just means you're doing a little bit more over time. And this, in the, the time scale can be quite long. I think when you first start out, it's very easy to look at progressive overload and apply it to every workout. So like this workout, a little more than last workout, next workout, a little more than this workout. So it's not just weight. It could be reps. It could be sets. So you could progressively overload. Could even be tempo. Yeah. yeah you just, just, mm -hmm. just, you're basically doing a little more than you were before. And over long periods of time, especially as you become advanced, you know, you want to kind of trend in that direction. However, mm -hmm. it has its limitations. You, you can't progressively overload forever. Obviously. Um, I mean, I've been working out since I was 14. So, uh, at this point, you know, my workouts should be 10 hours long with, you know, I'd be lifting you know, thousands of pounds. Yeah. yeah. It's, so it's just, it, it's, it's very good, uh, metric to look at, um, especially in the first three years, two or three years of training after mm -hmm. that, I wouldn't necessarily marry it because things start to change after a particular period of time. But within the first three years, it's very important failure as we define it is mm -hmm. the inability to complete, <coughs> to complete another rep with good form. Technical failure. Right. So you're lifting a weight. You can't lift it again with good form. So you fail. Now, some people define failure as not even be able to move the bar. I think that's beyond failure. I also think that the risk versus reward with that is just not worth it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think it's you're going to get more of a reward. All you're doing is increasing the risk of injury and or training bad recruitment patterns. You know, what you train is what you end up developing. So if you work out with a particular technique or form, that's off of what would be considered ideal. Well, that's what you end up strengthening. So we don't mm -hmm. recommend that as well. Now, leaving one or two in the tank. Okay, so this is a feel thing. This yeah. means that you need to kind of know what it feels like to fail. And to be quite honest, a lot of the benefit of occasionally trained to failure for the average person, I say occasional, I mean really occasionally, like you know, one workout a month mm -hmm. to see what this looks like is it gives you um, a good basis for where failure is. Because what, what typically will happen when someone's been working out for a while, <coughs> if they've never gone to technical failure, especially for a tough exercise like a squat or mm -hmm. uh, you know an overhead press or something like that, is that mm -hmm. they, they think that they're stopping two reps short of failure when in reality it was more like five or six. And if you've ever yeah. done barbell squats to failure, you know this. It's like you do a rep, you're like, oh my God, that's got to be the last one. Then you do another one. You're like, okay, I think I got more. And it's just so painful and so tiring and so exhausting that we tend to, you know, uh, not predict accurately where failure is. So going to failure, one of the big values of it is you know where to stop your your sets moving forward. I'd say that's the main the main value. That's the of bigger it, value is really that. getting a gauge of that because I think if you've never trained a failure, the thing that you just you you tend to underestimate how, what you got left, especially in exercises like you know like a barbell back squat or a deadlift. I feel like those big movements we end up getting more out. But you could train forever, Bruce, and never 
uh, actually go to mechanical failure and still continually to, pr to progress the body. Yeah. So and it's I, not and, necessary. And I think, especially when I'm talking to my male clients, we mm -hmm. we tend to flirt with that too much. My female clients tend to never do it, and I got to kind of push them to want to do it. My guys tend to want to do it all the time because we kind of have that ego inside of us. Oh, I, I could do more. I could do more. And so you're constantly doing that. But if you're doing any reps where, especially let, let's use like a bench press for an example, and you mm -hmm. and to get it up, you feel yourself rolling the shoulder or arching the back more to leverage yourself to get up. Like you're beyond, to me, that's beyond failure. I, I want to be able to keep strict good form and finish a rep. And mm -hmm. honestly, if you could barely finish that last rep, that's that's pretty close to failure right there already. And so mm -hmm. getting those in there every once in a while, there's value to that. But if mm -hmm. you're if you're having to squirm on the bench or cheat a side up or you do a squat and the knees cave in, and you feel your hips shift on the way up like we're training beyond that point. And like I think a lot of people tend to do that <clears throat> and it's just not necessary. Yeah. The three big factors that you manipulate because there's we could break the next these three factors down into subcategories and we can get real technical. But really, generally speaking, the three factors that you manipulate to progress your body when it comes to strength training in particular is intensity, frequency, mm -hmm. and volume. Okay. So how intensity is how hard the workout is. Frequency is how often you train a particular body part or exercise. And then volume would be typically, and there's different ways to calculate this, but typically it would be, you know, sets times reps times the weight that you lifted. And, and, and all of those play a role. I mean, there's, you know, 15 week studies on going to failure, doing one set that show great results. There's another study that shows that ramping up the volume over the, over 16 weeks up to like something like 50 sets. This just came out. Something like up to 50 sets per body part produced better results in that 16 week period. There's, uh, you know, studies that show training extremely frequently produces better results. One thing I'll say about all of these is that if you extend all these studies long enough, they'll all stop working. So, uh, really what you want to do is you want to play with these factors and it's a risk versus reward thing. What's working for my body? How is my mm -hmm. body responding? It stopped responding. <clears throat> Let's try some novelty. But I will say for most people, for most people, not trained to failure is yeah. going to get you better results. And for most people... Training the whole body a few days a week is superior to uh, other ways, and 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 then for most people, your total sets per body part probably are going to be around twelve for the week, and that's probably going to be best for most people. Yeah, I'd say the exception really only is is competition. So if you're actually like a competitor yeah, within, good point. you know, barbell lifts, you're you know your power lifter, or you know you're you're trying to hit like a new uh, level where you're stretching your body in terms of like, even if I'm training somebody through like football and we're trying to, to, to increase and, and to press and, and go a little bit beyond the healthy zone. So here's the thing about that. There are times, uh, you know, where we press our body beyond the health uh, range of, of, of training. what we're normally training. So, uh, but to their points, it's, it's if for your average person and you're just trying to get stronger, you can, continually get stronger uh, by mm -hmm. not exceeding that. So knowing that line's valuable, but really like there, there, there is no um, real like solid reason why you should press it to that degree. Bruce, what programs of ours have you gone through? Uh, a few of them. I've done uh, anabolic um, aesthetic, which, which that one was tough. <laughs> and then um, the 15 minutes, Oh, uh -huh. I, I did that when I had a really busy season at work, which that was interesting. And then I was just kind of going back through anabolic again, just, you know, as, as everybody always says, yes, yeah, the first one everybody does and you saw all the great results. So I kind of delved back into that one. Um, and that's, that's why I was, you know, I was in that phase three, you know, where there's a lot more volume. So that's yeah. why I had this question. And so, so it sounds like you guys are, uh, well, is it, is it correct to, to that? You're saying like, how do your sweet spot is, is, knowing yourself to know like, okay, this last rep that I did is the one I did with proper form. And if I were to do another one, I'm likely going to break down. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And or, cheat, cheat the rep. Even if you could get it up, if you got to cheat the rep, then we would consider that beyond failure right there. You know what, Bruce, let me, let me send, uh, let, we, uh, let me give you the advanced maps anabolic. So you can mm -hmm. actually see how we program failure in. 
So that oh, program that, that that program has that's the only one yeah, that it's the only program that we failure. actually programmed also failure accounts training. for the recovery that's and, necessary. And so the the other part mm-hmm. about yeah. you know the, the another reason why we don't promote failure training that often to people isn't necessarily too that it doesn't have its its studies that support the great benefits. It's that people take it always too far, and you need to account for when you stretch yourself like that. You also need to learn how to pull back. Yeah. So in that program. We, we scale that. So you have a week where you're you're chasing failure training and then you scale back and then you're mm. chasing failure. And so you can see like, so especially yeah. since how you started this conversation was from listening to us over time, you're starting to piece together like, okay, I'm getting the wisdom behind why they do what they do. What, yeah. so a guy like you who's already piecing that together with us, if you go through that program, you'll start to, it'll probably make sense yeah. to you like how you do that for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Okay. All right, Bruce. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thanks, guys. You got it. Yeah. I think if most people, this is, I've been trying to uh, kind of, I guess, hone this message, but I think if most people who are consistent, right, who train all year, year in, year out, I think if one fourth of the time they trained like they were pushing Mm -hmm. to progress and the other three fourths they were just trying to take care of themselves and maintain. I think if they did that year round, they'd be okay. And what that would look like would be like, you know, three three months out of the year, you're going for it. Or every quarter, four weeks or something like that, right? So yeah. something like that I think is, is – because here's what happens when you push it really hard. You do get faster results, but you will quickly stop and go backwards if you don't go back and scale back. And I think that one-fourth – is probably a good general way to look at it. Yeah, and I think people will have a misconception that we're we're not like really pressing the intensity, which is not true. Like <laughs> it's that's not what we're saying at all. It's it's a matter of effort and um you you can place a lot of that effort and challenge uh within the confines of doing it uh technically sound. And so that's actually a lot more difficult because you know, you rely a lot of times on momentum in your body to kind of contort and and be able to compensate to 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 be able to get the weight to go where it needs to go, but to do that with sound technical form is much more challenging. Listen, I love that we we don't push failure because you can, to your point that you made talking to him, that you could never train to failure and you could sculpt, shape, yeah. get get stronger. You could do everything and never train to failure. Does that mean that we don't think there's value to it? No. I just think that the message is the opposite in the space. Mm-hmm. The reason why we get questions like this all the time still and why we're constantly having to repeat this stuff is because the 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 general population or is being told that they don't train intense enough and intensity is such a major factor in in their yeah. results and you got to push harder and then and all the videos that you see yeah. are these videos of people struggling and challenging and pushing that intensity and so the 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 mainstream narrative around training is most people the reason why you don't look that way is you don't train hard enough mm-hmm. and so that's not true and i think that uh, i like that we counter that message it's not that none of us in here train to failure. We don't use that tool. We have a program where we've programmed it in there. It's just, it's not the end all be all. And in fact, I think most people overuse it and abuse it. So I, I look, do you want to just, do you want to train hard or do you want to get the best results? I mean, yeah, right. If you just want to train hard then then, you know, turn off this podcast, you don't need anybody's <laughs> advice, go to the gym and go You'll for bang it. your head on the wall. It's if fine. you want results, there's a smart way to do it. That's all it is. And there's a, the, the smart way to do it uses and manipulates those factors and ways to to get the body to goad the body to adapt and respond this whole idea of forcing the body uh and and what that paints in you know in our minds which is i got to beat the crap out of myself mm. otherwise nothing nothing's going to happen nothing will happen if that's your mentality did you say goad yep great verb there our next caller is noah from new hampshire no what's happening how can we help you Hey guys. Um, so first off, I know everybody says this, but just thank you for what you guys do. Um, you guys are great role models. I mean, like I have an awesome dad, but just it's great to have three others out there. So oh, thank, thank you. you. Right on, man. Thank you, man. Um, so I, a uh, little about me. So I'm uh, 23 and I'm getting married next year. Hey. Uh, yeah. Hey, congratulations. So, what'd you say? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I guess my question is, uh, do you have any advice for someone who wants to get as jacked as possible in a year. Um, so <laughs> just a little background. So about me, uh, I discovered you guys during the pandemic. Uh, at that point, I was 250 pounds. Oh, shit. Uh, 
pretty obese, um, no weight training experience or knowledge. And then after listening to you guys, I'm in a much healthier place. Um, so over the course of the last like three and a half, four years, I got down to about 170 pounds um, through weightlifting and cardio or, or weightlifting, but no cardio. Um, I got to a place that I was like relatively happy with. Um, never really broke 15% body fat. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I was, I was healthy. Um, but that said, uh, now that my uh, fiance and I are doing long distance, she's away at school. Um, and I have sort of the time and the money to push myself. That's what I want to do. Um, so that said though, right now I'm, I'm at around 190 pounds eating about 3000 calories a day. I do track. Um, and I t- sort of took the summer off just a little bit. So, you know, eating ice cream, you know, not training super consistently. That said, I now want to get back to it and basically looking to get as big and jacked as possible in a year. Oh. So that said, what's your advice? Good, All right, you're cool. in a good place. Let's go. Yeah, you're in a good place. She's dude. already going to marry you. You don't need to work out anymore. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the last hurrah. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, do you do you know? So you were at your 190 now eating about 3,000 calories a day, you said? Correct. Yeah. Okay. But you had a, originally you had gotten down to 170. So you put on another 20. Is it muscle, body fat? What did you put on? You know, that's, that's a good question. So the photos that I sent you, I was about 170, 175. Um, since then, I've definitely put on muscle, uh, but I've definitely also put body fat on. So like I lost most of the definition in my core. I'm stronger, but not nearly as lean. I, I would say I'm closer to 19 or 20% body fat. Gotcha. Okay. So here's what I would do. I would go on a cut to start with. You have a year, right? I have. Well, now it's closer to 10 months. Okay. I would go on a cut and then I would go on a bulk and then I would go in a cut again. I would alternate between cut and bulk just to give you that kind of lean body mass that you're looking for. How do you want to look on your wedding day? Big or lean? Don't I say, definitely don't say big lean. and lean, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely would rather be lean than big. Okay. So that's how I, so I would, I would make sure to end your workout cycle, your diet, uh, with a cut going into your wedding. But I would start with a cut and then go into a bulk and then follow our pro. What, do you have our programs? Do you follow any of them? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I forgot to mention that. So I have a lot of your programs. Um, I've run anabolic a bunch. I started out in aesthetic and lived in that early on in my fitness journey until I heard that you guys say that's not like the best program to live in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've done anabolic a bunch. I'm currently doing split though. Okay. And how do you do, like we, have, do we have a full year? What's our, do we have a full Ten year? Months, 10 months. 10 yeah. months is what we have. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yep. basically three, had, programs. three programs is yeah. what we would do then. Yep. I mean, I, I love anabolic performance and then either ending on aesthetic S- or symmetry. Oh, you can go you symmetry. Oh yeah, dude. I yeah. think you should do symmetry. How far are you into split and how's the volume? Is it too much for you? Is it okay? No, I, I like the volume. Um, I'm only, well, I mean, I'm only a couple weeks in at the moment, but okay. Hmm. All right. So you have about maybe another, uh, almost three months left with split. Pretty much. Okay. Go in a cut now. I would go in a, okay. in, a, in a small deficit. So if your maintenance is 3,000, bring it down to about 2,500. Hmm. After split, go on a bulk uh, with symmetry. And then let's have you end with anabolic, with which is you know going to be your, your kind of traditional mass builder. I think that would be a good approach. Now, the key is going to be to really listen to your body and be consistent. Consistent in the sense that we can get carried away with both a cut and a bulk, right? We can get carried away with a cut where we go too deep, too low with the calories. And then the bulk, a lot of times people just lose track and they just, they're not really looking at, oh, I'm 500 calories above maintenance. They just eat like crazy. So if you're consistent, 10 months is a long time. You can make huge, like incredible transformation in 10 months. The key here, and you know, you might be looking for like a, um, like a magic answer, a secret answer. Really, it's about consistency. It's yep. everything is going to be yep. the diet, bro. Yeah, yep. you've got a good base right now. You've got an experience of lifting, so this isn't foreign to you. Your uh, good amount of calories where you're at right now, like you have a good amount of time. You sounds like you're you're, you're dedicated. It's literally going to be how consistent to the nutrition can you stay? Yep. And if you really want, if you want to really blow her socks off and you want to have the and build the best physique you've ever had on your wedding day it really will be can you discipline yourself for 10 months to sacrifice all the t- nutritional temptations that are going to happen and if you can you're going to have an incredible time. and this is what I'll do since you have a bunch of our programs I'll have Doug put you in the forum and if you do this for me it's once a month 
Give us a, a check back in where you're at. This is how many calories I've been eating for the last three to four weeks, boys. Here's where here's where my current physique is at. Let give me a little insight on how you're feeling, what you've been doing, how consistent you've been, everything like that. And then we can give you like little adjustments from month to month, all the way till your wedding. Yeah. Now, the, when I, when we say consistency, the the tough part typically is the weekends for people, and yeah. so it's got a consistency, consistent like you're always on point. If you're always on point for the next 10 months, you're going to make such a radical transformation in your physique. It's going to, it's going to be crazy. It'll be insane. So that's, okay. that's the key, right? That's like the secret thing right there is, you know, don't miss workouts, be consistent with your sleep. Because, by the way, everything that we're saying requires a skill that is going to make you an incredible husband and one day, hopefully an incredible father, which is discipline. A, a, a disciplined man is a good man because uh, undisciplined men are wild. You know, men have a huge potential for all kinds of craziness. So discipline, training it in any different, in any way is going to make you a better man, especially at your age, you're 23. So if you can be, if you can show yourself consistency for 10 months with all these things and not go off the rails, not go out with your buddies and drink, not go eat a bunch of whatever, not miss workouts because you don't feel like it, not go to bed late because you want to, watch something or, or play video games. If you could do that, you will develop a lot of discipline by the end of this and it will make you a better husband and a, and a better father for sure. On that note, you know, how's your self-awareness? What's uh, if you had to tell me like, Adam, this is my weakness or this is my biggest challenge, uh, either nutritionally or being consistent with the lifting on certain days. Like where, where's your Achilles heel? Where do you, where do you struggle the most? That That's a good question. I'm, I would say probably, um, you know, I, I go to the gym consistently, but there's, there's definitely some days that I'll, you know, skip the compound movement just because, you know, it's, it's hard. And so I, I could be better about that. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm definitely consistent with my diet for the most part, consistent with the gym for the most part, but I definitely could be better about just a hundred percent consistency. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a good goal right there in itself is to not not skip the compound because those those, those squats yeah. and deadlifts and oh, overhead man. press are going to pack on the most amount of muscle. That's right. Uh, and show you the greatest change. So disciplining yeah. yourself there. The the thing I was looking for is like your 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 treat or your nutritional habit. I know you mentioned you have like ice cream like you know, during the summer and stuff like that. Be aware of what like if you are guilty of not only having like the ice cream here and there, but also what I tended to do at your age is miss my protein intake, right? I ate the ice cream and then I also missed the protein intake. And then that was also the week where I didn't squat, you know, like that's a, like stringing, st stringing together weeks where that doesn't happen. is going to make yeah. a, a huge difference in, in your progress. So, but if you post in the forum once a month and give us an update on, on where you're at, what you're doing, what, what the last four weeks have been like, the boys and I can can make subtle adjustments along the way and get you yeah. looking shredded by wedding time. Awesome. Yeah, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you, you guys. Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome, man. Yeah, we'll do that. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you got it. Thanks for calling. 23 is young, huh? Mm -hmm. Young kid getting married. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Yeah, it's uh this this is a good exercise of discipline, you know, and uh that's what I mean, that's what the next phase is for a young man is, you know, mm -hmm. you're you you go into that phase of of, of manhood of, of adulthood where you, you have to, you have to be consistent and disciplined because you know, life, life gets hard. Life is stressful. Yeah. The message around consistency is such a blah generic thing that you probably, everybody hears from every, you know why person. people miss the, the, uh, under, they undervalue it. They think, Oh yeah. Okay. I heard consistent. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. It's like already a known. Listen, if, if one day a week you're off every week versus someone yeah. who's on every single day, every week, dramatic difference this is why i love and, and hopefully he listens to this part too so and it was around this time in his my life when i started to piece this one together i've shared this hack before and that was i when i when i'd set a goal like this for like 10 months a long time i i, I it's inevitable that i don't care i mean maybe you're a competitor you and you're and you're obsessed and you might be able to string 10 months of perfection of never missing anything that's not likely right it's what's likely is that right you're going to have a day or two here and there in that process. So that's inevitable. So my goal is like, here's what I nutritionally need to do every single day. Here's what I need to do training or activity wise every single day. Let me see how many days I can string together and not mess that up at all and be perfect. When that happens, say day 11, you miss, you end up not hitting your protein intake or you missed the, you didn't squat or like that. Okay. 
That's not a perfect day. I'm back to zero. Now I got to beat 11 days. And I would just keep playing this game of every time I didn't have a perfect day, I'm back to my streak of consistency yeah. to zero and, try and, and, beat and, and then try and beat it. Beat the last score. And then, yeah, and then what ends up happening is now I've strung 17 days in a row. And, oh, now I've done 30 days in a row. And then before you know it, you look back and you're like, oh, shit, I've actually put together two and a half months of perfection. And, and over the total, I've only had four bad days in six months. That That's how you move the yeah, needle. Well, and that's the stuff you need to peer into. Because, I mean, I was like racking my brain. I don't even remember what you recommended program-wise. It doesn't really matter, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah. yes, it does, like, in terms of, like, which ones like promote the most muscle building, but yeah, the without consistency, the consi yeah, yeah, without the consistency, like we could mention anything and it's not really going right. to get you. No, far. you're right. You're right. We, he could literally run three of any of our programs. Yeah. If he's, if he's consistent with the lifting and he's dialed on the nutrition, he'll, he'll transform his Subpar body. program done thing. consistently is superior to a perfect program done inconsistently. That's right. Our next caller is Lorenzo from New York. Lorenzo, what's happening? How can we help you? Gentlemen, it's a, it's an honor and a pleasure, guys. What up? Thank right you. on. What's I, happening? What's happening? I just have to say, um, you know, obviously your programs and your fitness advice have, have changed lives, but uh, I think what put you guys over the top is the transparency and the honesty that you guys share with your family lives, your journey, your health issues, and et cetera, et cetera. And people can really relate to that, and I appreciate that about you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So a little background, um, I'm 51, um, 6'1", 187. I've worked out on and off for you know, 30 plus years, a lot of running involved. I was on the track team, all that, et cetera. Um, I've always bench pressed, uh, probably hit maybe 250, 270 back in the day. Um, I never deadlifted consistently until about a year and a half ago with anabolic. Um, that quickly went to about 405. I'm at 405 now. Ooh, nice. And, nice. you know, I'm no spring chicken, so the numbers aren't extremely important, but, you know, I am concerned with getting stronger and continuing on that path. Um, I feel like my ceiling for uh, my deadlift is so much higher than my ceiling on my, uh, on my bench press. When I bench press anywhere around 200 and above, I start to feel it in my frame and my bones. And with deadlift, I could easily see getting to probably 500 pounds. And I don't know what the breakdown is as far as the percentages of what it should be, et cetera. But, um, you know, I have long arms. I have skinny joints. Um, not using that as, as an excuse, but kind of, sort of. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm happy with aesthetically. I'm happy with, you know, my build. I've always had uh, a well-developed chest, so I didn't really have to do much. But I'm just wondering. I hear about... Um, imbalances when it comes to left versus right. And I'm wondering if posterior, anterior muscular development and imbalances are a thing as well as far as that causing uh, injuries in the future and what have you. Yeah, that's, there, that's a good question. There's, there's, a, there's, a, that's that can always happen. Um, usually it's the uh, other way. Yeah, usually if you, it's the I injuries happen when people push more than they pull. Um, you should be able to pull more than you push. By the way, the mm. leverages that make you a good deadlifter are also the same leverages that are going to make you a bad bench presser. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. if you if you deadlift well, you probably do have long arms. Yeah. Um, if you're bench real well, you probably have short arms. Um, that's just one mm. example. So really, really good bench pressers are almost never really good deadlifters and, uh, and vice versa. And but, if I had mm -hmm. a client... I would want you to have a stronger posterior chain because everything we do is anteriorly driven. You drive your car all day long, your arms are in front of you, you eat everything. Everything you do is rounding and closing the body. So being really strong on the opposing side is a very healthy, good thing, good bat. That's a good balance to have. Even though the numbers, right, you're not bench pressing 400 pounds and you're deadlifting 400 pounds, that doesn't make you imbalanced in that area. Like you, we do so much stuff uh, in, 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 in anterior that having a strong posterior chain is, is most people don't have a strong yeah. enough posterior chain. Yeah, I would worry about the, the imbalances that I would worry about the most, I guess the most common imbalances left are right to, to right. left. Yeah. Right to left is, is one hip flexor to core stability is another. That's a little bit more specific. Um, anterior to posterior, you'll see this with shoulder injuries. Often people will like bench press a lot. This doesn't happen as much as it used to. Like when we were young, 
you know, you're the same age group, Lorenzo, you know, we go to the gym in, in my teens, like nobody was deadlifting and everybody was bench pressing. And uh, then you would see shoulder injuries as a result, like shoulder pain. But I wouldn't worry too much about, about the pulling versus pushing in your case. But if you have right to left, big, big discrepancies, that can definitely cause problems. Map symmetry would be good. Well, I try not to favor one over the other. Listen, I love deadlifting. It's more nuanced, and I guess, you know, that's a big reason why I just love it. And plus, I'm built more for it. But so you're just saying just continue to push the ceiling in, yeah. in both. I yep. do, you know, continue to enjoy bench pressing as well and use it as a motivation to get stronger. Mm-hmm. But uh, just continue and, and yep. let my body tell me. Right? That's right. Yeah, yeah that's I'd, let, uh, I'd like to. I'd it. like to send you map symmetry. I think you would enjoy that. And since this is a question about imbalances, yep. like map symmetry, the way it's laid out, you have an isometric portion, then you have unilateral stuff. So you're gonna like Sal's point. You're gonna see if there's any discrepancy left or right, um, and that you'll be able to address that. And then at the end of the program, uh, it ends in a like a five by five type of phase. So then you'll get to go back to your deadlifting and squatting and then see how training unilateral for a while has improved that. So I think that'd be a good way to interrupt your, your training. Totally. And you know, I noticed that you're a, a, a mail carrier. Um, so yeah. I've, I've worked with mail carriers <laughs> I before. Get a, step, I get a lot of steps in. <laughs> yeah. You get yeah. those steps, but I've noticed with mail carriers, Kobe's amazing calves. We sometimes see a right to left imbalance because they'll always carry uh, their bag on one side. And because there's so much movement throughout the day, repeated movement, that I've, like I said, I've worked with some, and there was there would be an imbalance between right and left, and I had to have them switch the bag to the other side to try to balance things out while we trained, because it was really hard to overcome when you know you know for seven eight hours a day they're they're walking with a bag around the same shoulder. It's funny you say that because I stopped using my bag years ago. The the volume has has decreased, but I, it was noticeable. I used to carry it on my right side, and it was just so noticeable. And I, I was like, I was just like, there's something wrong with you know me carrying all this mail. I would break it up or do what I had to do. I rarely carry a bag nowadays. That's okay, awesome. all right, good deal, good deal. But yeah, symmetry will Absolutely. symmetry will be One great. More Go, thing. Ahead. Go ahead. Um, my girlfriend, uh, she's been running anabolic as well, and um, sometimes when she can't get to the gym, she doesn't do. She feels guilty, which is a good thing, but she doesn't turn that guilt into doing her trigger sessions. So her name is Chanel. Could you just please tell Chanel the, the importance of doing her trigger session? <laughs> uh-huh, that's a good question. I don't know if this will work. Yeah. Do that. I don't know if this will yeah, work. I, I never word. met a woman that that does something because her boyfriend or husband told it. That's <laughs> no. right. That's why he's having you do it. So it's, it's coming. It's coming from you. Yeah, but not, she knows. He told us. Right. No, you know. Okay. So here's the deal with trigger sessions. Uh, trigger sessions. Whatever results you get with Maps Anabolic, you can confidently add about five to ten percent by doing trigger sessions. Okay. So it's not all the results. But 5 to 10% on top of what you're already doing by just doing some trigger sessions is a big deal. And I mean that in terms of muscle growth, strength, and fat loss. Mm-hmm. So it's not, it's it's still significant. So people will skip it thinking it's not, it's, you know, inconsequential. It's not. Like you will get, like I said, 5 to 10% better results by doing those consistently. One of the best things that I ever did was allow myself that that okay if i didn't get to the gym because i was all or nothing most of my lifting career is like oh if i didn't get right. a hard workout in then fuck it i'm not gonna do anything one of right, the best right. things i did was get rid of that mentality of like hey even three sets of body weight squats mm-hmm. or lunges or 100 push-ups is actually way more beneficial than i think it is like it's not like it has to be an either or and so if you miss the gym then, hey, get in some body weight squats yeah. that take you five, 10 minutes to do yeah. or do some trigger sessions and you'll see doing, because what's going to happen is over a course of a year, you're going to have a bunch of days that you miss. We're all human mm-hmm. like we're and, and we're not all competitors and give a shit if we miss a, a workout here and there. So instead of writing it off completely, just do something, you know, mm-hmm. or even like I like, like, so what Katrina and I will do sometimes too is we know we miss the gym that day. So we'll go out of our way to get an hour walk that we normally wouldn't do. It's like, just do something to promote, uh, you know, health or making a good choice just because you didn't lift weights doesn't mean there's not something else that you can do. Awesome. Um, I picked up anabolic advanced. Would I run that before symmetry or after run run symmetry first? And that's actually a great program to follow up with it. Yep. Uh, Awesome. Yep. You got it. Thank you so much guys. I appreciate you guys. You got it, brother. Thank you. He looks pretty good for 51, man. Yeah. Looks what, great. What the hell's happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I mean, yeah. he was never a deadlifter, and now he's pulling 400 something pounds. Well, I mean, that's, hey, listen, I, this is so true. Like, like the greatest 
The greatest pressers are terrible deadlifters, oh. and the greatest deadlifters tend to be terrible. That's why pressers. I like powerlifting the way they have it structured because it is lifts. like that. Yeah, yeah. The, the leverage is is very obvious. You know where you have your advantages and disadvantages, and to be able to work on your disadvantages, you know, is just going to bring your whole body up. A hundred percent. And and then again, for people listening right now, um, you you don't want to push more than you can pull. Uh, and when I say pull, I mean row. Deadlift is part of it, but really like row. <laughs> And uh, right to left, that's where the issues happen, is when the right to left is off, mm -hmm. that's when you start to see some big problems. Our next caller is Megan from Indiana. Hi, Megan. How can we help you? Hey, guys. I'm super excited uh, for the chance to talk to you guys a little bit. Um, so I'll just uh, jump right into it. Thank you. Right. Um, I started getting really serious about my health and fitness around December of last year. I've always been a super active person. I was a college athlete. Uh, I played softball. And I work as an ecologist now, so I'm outside walking several miles, usually a day, um, when I'm in the field. Um, not to mention I'm the mom of two young boys, a year and a half and five years old. Um, when I was pregnant with my first one, I found out that I had a thyroid disease. Um, so first off, I wanted to say thank you guys. Um, after listening uh, to some of your episodes on hormones, I worked up the courage to go see a functional medicine doctor. And I'm so glad I did. I did that in September. Uh, so I'm 32 years young. I say young, but I, some days I question <laughs> and uh, I just was feeling off. Um, so after I had my second son, um, I've had some very bad anxiety, depression and weight gain. I've had, I've been meal prepping since January, uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, I started going to the gym to try to feel better both mentally and physically and to get stronger and burn fat. And despite all the meal prep and workouts, I've gained like 30 pounds since January. You know, I expected some weight gain, but I feel like that was a little excessive. Um, and it seems like I'm doing everything right. Um, my husband even jumped on board, and of course, his uh, results are amazing. Um, so don't get me wrong. I, you know, I've gotten stronger, and I, I have lost some fat, but it just seems like the midsection won't go away. Um, and that is part of the reason I went to the functional medicine, as well as other symptoms, such as no energy, super tired, and absolutely zero libido. Um, she did a hormone test and a test for T3, and she found that despite my T4 and my TSH being in range, my T3 was low and my progesterone was super low. It was like a 23. I don't know if you know much about the scale for that. It was a 23, and it should have been between like a 60 and 100. My DHEA was a 2, and it should have been between like a 3 and a 10. Um, so it turns out I wasn't as crazy feeling as I thought I was. <laughs> um, I'm now starting treatments for these issues. I've just been super discouraged by the lack of, of fat loss in the midsection. Um, you know, like I said, I've, I've had tremendous gains. Um, I'm bench pressing 180. Wow. I'm squatting 250. Uh, I'm deadlifting 350. Whoa, um, wow. You're strong. So, <laughs> yeah, like the gains have been amazing. Um, I'm really happy with my results in the gym. Uh, but my, my question now is, do I need to focus on more reps with lighter weight or stick with the heavy lifting to try to get that stubborn hormone? hormonal belly fat to go. You know, I'm currently at my heaviest weight. Um, I've lost a few pounds since, since September. So I'm down to about 250. Um, you know, that's going to the gym three to four days a week. Uh, goal weight is like 180. Um, like I said, my husband's been super supportive through the whole process. I've always struggled um, with my weight and my size. And, I, you know, at this point, I'm just super discouraged, you know, finding the, the hormone results. Um, just, I don't know. That's just really a Okay. Don't let that don't me, so. don't let that discourage you. That's actually a really good thing. I mean, think about the the hard work, the consistency you've been putting in and being frustrated that you're not seeing the amount of results you want to see and you've just unlocked and figured that out. I mean, it would actually I would be now I would be a little discouraged and frustrated had you gone through all that hard work, that consistency, and then you found out you're perfectly balanced and you're normal. You'd be like, what the hell's going on? Then that would be that would be discouraging. It's actually really encouraging that you've actually seen the strength gains, the results that you have, and and hormonally we've been kind of all so, over the board right now. So Megan, are, is it is it Hashimoto's or or hyp hypothyroidism? Did you identify? Did you test for antibodies? Yeah, it's hypo. Um, I'm not sure if it's Hashimoto or not but um she said it was hypothyroid so okay are you going to be a going on uh on on some uh, right. t3 th medication and some dhea or is she doing some other stuff first yes i uh just started taking um liothyronine for my t3 
and I'm taking a progesterone cream and a DHEA as well now. Okay. And did you test for antibodies just to make sure you don't have any, any antibodies to your thyroid? Um, she, I'm not hundred percent sure. I would have okay. to, to check, check with those results. Make sure you check and ask. I'm sure she did. If she's functional medicine, she probably did because if you have antibodies, then taking more thyroid, uh, isn't going to necessarily help. That's just going to, your body's not going to necessarily utilize it. Are you going through one of our friends or you, th did you find a different, uh, therapist yourself? No, this was a, a local okay. uh, medicine okay. doctor here. Okay. Yeah. So make sure that they tested for antibodies. I'm sure they did. It's one of the first things that they'll test when they look at thyroid. Now you said you recently have lost some weight. Is that because you added the thyroid medication and the progesterone? Is that what happened or what would change the last month? Yeah. So that has changed. And I, I really cut back more on my carbs and my fats. Okay. Um, and I don't know if that was the right thing to do because right now I'm around two. Well, I was, my goal before was 2000 calories and I've cut that down to about 1800 now. Okay. So you're at 1800 for the last month and you've seen some weight loss. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, you're, you're moving in the right direction. Yeah. You're doing all the right stuff. So the only things I would check on would be I would have uh, gut health tested. Um, I would have, if you haven't already, I would see uh, and have them test you for antibodies. Uh, so if you have any autoimmune issue with your thyroid. And then as far as your training and you, is concerned, you asked about high reps. High reps, low reps, it, really all of it's muscle building. The reason why you switch from one to the other is because your you, your body got accustomed yeah, novelty. to training one way. So if you've been training lower reps for a while, well, let's say you, five or six weeks, I would go to higher reps yeah. just to get that new. Are you running one of our programs right now or no? Uh, yeah. So I started the year with anabolic and um, I'm actually on the peak week for uh, power lift. Oh, okay. I was training for a, I was actually training for a competition Saturday. It's a local one. Yeah. And now I'm like, my weight is so high. Like I don't, I just, I'm kind of embarrassed to even oh, go to God. the weight. Oh, don't. Have you ever done a powerlifting competition? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I did one in April. Um, that was one of the photos I submitted. It was from a, a competition in April. Oh, it's such um, a great, that, it's such so. a great environment. Don't, yeah, go do it. Go do it. Keep doing it. And also keeping this in mind, Megan, and I was surprised Sal didn't say, because he says this all the time with someone like in a situation. Like you. One thing that we, what we want to be thinking of right now is getting you healthy and balanced. It's far more important, I know, than the, than the weight loss that you feel right now, which I know that could be hard, right? You've been putting all this work in. You're finally starting to get things balanced out. And so you're like, I want to see the results now. And so you want to cut. But the truth is, What's going to get you to where you want to go is making sure you're a hundred percent healthy and that your hormones are balanced. Yeah. And if you all of a sudden go into like a dramatic cut or you're, we're not giving our body enough healthy fats yeah. or we're yeah. missing protein intake because you're trying to cut or you're pushing the body or you're, you're not sleeping well and you're really pushing hard, that's only going to make getting the hormones all balanced out even more difficult for you. So yeah. that needs to be the priority right now. And so I love the fact that you're doing power lift. You're focused on strength. Really allow that to be the metric. Let the doctor do her job mm -hmm. and balance your hormones out. Continue to check on that. And that should be the goal right now is that you 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 go back and visit her, say, in 30, 60 days, and she's like, hey, Megan, we're doing great. Yeah. Every, your levels look awesome. Yeah. And and that means you're you're taking care of yourself, and then it'll come. Like it, it's going to come. Just keep working on getting healthy as possible. I sure. mean, my wife went through this exact same process. Found out she had Hashimoto's, but you know, even the the thyroid medication itself, it took like over a year. You know, to to really fine tune, get the right dose. Uh, you know, find the right medication for that, and then once you know that was the right formula, it was like boom. Then all of a sudden, this this weight loss, you know, that had been you know looming forever, you know, started to happen. But you know, it's it, everybody's individual with it. You know, you just focus on staying healthy and doing what you're doing. Did you did you test for food sen sensitivities, Megan? No, I've, that's something I've never done, and I actually listened oh. to you guys' show a while back. Yeah, and yeah that'd I've, be helpful. Uh, so be. what's common, not always, but what's common with people who have thyroid type issues is a gluten sensitivity. Yep. So gluten tends to, if it affects the body in a, in a way that's, you know, not celiac, right? If it's, it, it, it can, and it tends to affect the thyroid. So you can either do a food sensitivity test or just on your own, replace your gluten containing carbs with non gluten containing carbs and see how you feel within a few weeks. But it, anytime I had a client who had any kind of thyroid issue, I would always remove gluten. And I would say seven out of 10 times, we'd have a positive response. So a, a pretty, pretty significant majority. 
Okay. Uh, she did recommend that I try intermittent fasting. Would that be something that you guys would recommend? Because I've heard mixed for, reviews for, on well, it. Well, it depends on what the reason is. Yeah. Uh, if she's trying to give your gut health a break, uh, if she's trying to work on inflammation, in that sense, maybe. For weight loss, no. No, that's a terrible idea. I think it just it, it, it tends to encourage a restrict binge model of uh, of diet. Um, it's interesting that she recommended fasting with thyroid issues, though, yeah, because I'm really yeah, surprised she did that. Typically, really that can me. mess with hormones, but I don't know because I don't know all of you know what you're doing, and I don't know what she's looking at when she's working with you. So, Megan, we have a free uh, um, Mind Pump Holistic Health. It's a free Facebook forum, and it's literally. Uh, ran by fun uh, functional medicine practitioners. So they're in there and they're answering questions. So that's a great community uh, to be in. And, to, and you could just, you could yeah, cross just, check and ask questions. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Hey, I'm Get doing some more opinions. Exactly. I think it would be a great place for you to, to kind of hang out and share kind of what your, what your doctor's doing and what you're noticing. And there's a really good community in there of people that are all going through mm -hmm. similar stuff. So do you remember why she recommended fasting to you? Uh, I don't. She's said she thought that, window it was like a was it like a 12 8 window yeah. does that sound typical she said that she's seen people get good results with that okay um, all right but okay. so hmm. so with that, i know i'm gonna i'm gonna I maybe anger some people i would listen to a functional medicine practitioner for things related to functional medicine i would not yeah, diet, follow a workout yeah. plan that a functional medicine practitioner gave me nor would i follow a weight loss plan that they gave me with diet. Now, if they gave you a diet based off of health, that's where you're going to mm -hmm. get. And by the way, what, we, what Adam said earlier about focusing on your health, if you become healthy and balanced, the weight loss will happen. Mm -hmm. If you just focus on the weight loss, you're going to be sacrificing both. You, you, you're not going to get either one if you do it that way. So really the, the best road forward regardless is going to be to balance those things out. So that's what I would be focused on 100%. Okay. All right. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys. You yeah, got oh right. wait, real quick. You're she following Powerlift. Let's yeah. give her a program to follow after uh after Powerlift. You want to follow like Symmetry? Yeah, yeah, let's do Symmetry afterwards. Do that. How's that sound? Okay. Yeah, that sounds awesome. We'll send that to you. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you All guys. Right. I appreciate and it. And keep good us luck. posted. Yeah, keep us posted. Good luck on your competition. Keep kicking ass, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate right, it. it. Strong as shit, bro. Yeah, yeah that's great. great. Yeah. Uh, 350 on a deadlift. Yeah, yeah so you know. I don't know who this person is working with, so I, so I, I don't. I'm, this is just, you know, they there there's good people in every space, and some that are not so great. What you have to be careful with as a consumer, look, I'm a my expertise is exercise and diet from a, a perspective of general health, fitness, and performance. Okay, if you came to me for functional medicine advice, yikes, I yeah. could give some good guidelines, but I'm not going to be as good as a functional medicine practitioner, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, you would want to go to that person for that, but, but you also, same thing, don't go to a, a, a chiropractor, a doctor, a functional medicine practitioner, a, you know, naturopath for a get lean diet or a, no. a, a, a program to get stronger with your workouts. Cause that's not their expertise. Not, so. not only that, Sal, but just like there is great trainers and terrible trainers, just like there's right. great doctors and terrible doctors, the functional medicine doctors are no different. There's great ones and there's terrible ones. Right. So one of the things, if you listen to this show that you can trust is that if we talk about somebody's business or, or highlight or bring somebody on this show that we recommend, we vetted them. Yeah. So you can't go wrong if you're working with a Dr. Becky Campbell or Stephen Cabral, like these, these are really, really good doctors yeah. that we have had the opportunity to sit down for hours with and vet and understand how right. they coach and teach and what they're... So utilize, and then we offer a free, if you're not sure, you know, go in the forum and, and, and talk to the community and ask questions and, and find out for yourself if right. this is the right match for you. But you can do that remotely. You don't have to be in person. A lot of these tests, they mail them in, they look at your blood work and results, and they're going to be able to, you don't need to have somebody you sit in an office with to do this anymore. Uh, you can absolutely do this virtually. And so my recommendation would be to to utilize these sources that we've already vetted for you. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. They're free. Check them out. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam, all on Instagram. Check us out.